Hey guys. What's up you guys? Welcome, Welcome back. back. We are so excited because yes. today, like, we know we've had a guest before. This as is you our non-family guest. Yes. To us, like, this is our first real guest. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was like family, <laughs> you know, like Mel doesn't count. Just throw him in. He's um, what are the, our guinea pig? No, no, like no. Extra. Like Mel didn't have a choice. Yeah. You know, like, like I forced him. Like you're gonna be on the podcast, yeah. but today someone came by choice. Yes. So us, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, today, as you guys can tell by the title, today we have the beautiful Yvette Garcia. Hi guys. She is a wonderful mommy, friend, wife, business owner, CEO. Yes. And honestly, like I feel so inspired by you so much, yeah, like business you, wise, just you as a person, as a mom, like the way you just balance everything and juggle everything. Yes. It's like, sometimes I feel like I'm doing a lot and then I see you and I'm like, oh my God, like how does she have the time to like Girl. do all these things? <laughs> We're going to start this um, episode already emotional. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, we're so happy to have you in today. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, like me and Yvette have been friends for, wait, by the way, I was so shocked when you told me Yvette was your middle name. Yes. And I not don't your know that either. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 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 My first name is Blanca, which- I love that name. I love I, Blanca. I know they were just telling me right now, but Blanca- my family knows me as Blanca and obviously because I was, it, it was named after one of my aunts who I honestly don't even really have. Like, I don't, I, I don't know if it was an aunt or like a godmother. Mm -hmm. um, but I always question my mom and I'm like, why did I get Blanca and like all my siblings got such different names? Like, I feel like their names are kind of cute and cool. Really? I feel like mine just, I don't know. I've never been a big fan of it. What are some of their names? Like my sister's name is Viviana oh, and it's like, so I pretty. feel like it's super pretty. It's cute. They call her Vivi? They call her Vivi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I tell her all the time because I'm like, you have the coolest name. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's so cute. And then my brother's, it's like, they're very basic names, mm -hmm. but they're traditional. Like Eric, Raphael, mm -hmm. you know, you hear them. I feel like Blanca, it just doesn't. I love that. I don't know. I feel like Yvette suits me better. And that's why I've always gone by Yvette. Yeah. You know, but as of lately though, I've definitely been noticing that people on social media have been calling me Blanca a little bit more. Really? And I'm like, you guys need to stop. It's Yvette. <laughs> you really don't like it that much? I don't. And obviously, because my family, I'm not going to have them call me Yvette. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. be like, hey, because that's all they know me as. Mm -hmm. It's Blanca, Blanca, Blanca. But like, I kind of gave myself like a different name on social media. But now that people are starting to call it, I don't, it's not like bad or anything. It's just, it's a little harder to get used to because I'm so used to everybody knowing me as Yvette you when know, they do meet me on social media. I feel that because you're saying your family calls you Blanca. Like yeah. for me, the people who knew me like way back then, they would call me Nazi. Right. So when someone like new calls me Nazi, it's kind of weird. It's weird. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Where'd you hear where'd you hear that from? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, who yeah. told you you can call me Blanca? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. Um, but yeah, guys, back to like I actually texted Eva and I'm like, how did we become friends? I know you asked me, do you remember? And I don't. Am I, I a horrible friend? Because do but you remember? Have you guys been friends for? I remember it was a I don't long need, time, but what like, when do you think? I'm trying to like remember where we a actually met event? for like the first time. But was it post COVID? I don't know. But when we met, let me tell you guys, we were inseparable. I love Nas. No, She's literally. my bestie. Oh my gosh. No, like we just like clicked so well. And yeah. the thing is, guys. Okay, before or after kids? Because that's how we gauge our timelines. Before or after K-Mon? No, it was, it was after K-Mon. Was it? Because I think the first time, like just me, you, Ulysses, yeah. and Mel hung out, we went to dinner and I told you I was pregnant with, with twins. With the twins. Yes. And you oh, were like, sure. you're right. You yes. guys see why we gauge our life with... So now <laughs> we know it's no, at it least was. three years. It was. It's at least three years. But guys, the thing is, um, Yvette and I have the same management. Yes. So we have the same manager and our manager would always tell us that we would get along really well, that we remind her of, of each, each other. other. Yeah. It's so. crazy. When I first started with a the management, they would always use Nas as a reference for really? everything. Yes. Like they'd be like, oh, um, I'm going to send you a video. And it was always like your type of like lifestyle. And not that I had a hard time trying to figure out why, but because we do have very different audiences, I was trying to figure out like, okay, what's so similar about us? But as soon as we met, I was like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I get it. I yeah. understand. Like, where she was like where my management team was coming from as far as like you guys are so similar like mm -hmm. you guys would get along so well and i mean it makes sense they well, know from outside like a third person perspective you guys kind of have similar lives like a mommy yeah. boss mm -hmm. you know kids husband mm -hmm. but you guys are still like young and fresh like you know yeah. what i mean yeah y'all <laughs> like, ain't washed up yet yeah. <laughs> no 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 but it's not like you guys are uh, like mom, family. Now I'm done with my career. Right. Yeah, I let myself balance. go. I feel like you guys are 
you know, just looking at you right now, you wouldn't know that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You wouldn't right. be like, oh my God. You know? Yeah. No, I agree. And we have three. We which have is three crazy. Kiddos. There you yes. go. And I'm a Sagittarius and she's a Leo. Yes. So and two have... boys and one girl. Oh my two God. Mo- I just realized that. I know. Wait, I did. And then it's our crazy. husbands are pretty similar too. Very similar. Like they're yeah. very just like chill. They chill, just let us be. Go with the flow. Mm-hmm. You know? Hype as um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah. So like we said, you just – the way you balance everything is just so incredible. Like, honestly, you're probably one of the hardest workers I know. And on top of that, I also think you're like one of the kindest people I know. Like the way that you, you care so much about like the people around you, like you can really tell you're so, I mean, Leo, the lion, fiercely loyal. Um, One thing I love about you too is like, Eva is the farthest thing from a gatekeeper. Like as you, as a business owner, as you know, like I'm like trying to pursue a business, like the way Eva like just put me on and like helped me out with so many different things. It was never like you go figure out on your own, like the way that you just like, you know, you don't ever feel like you're above anybody or anything. And it's just so incredible, honestly. Like I think all the blessings that come in your life come to you because you're just such a good person. And it's like, it's just your good karma, oh, thank you, you so know, much. coming back to you. I mean, there's room for everyone, you know, especially when it comes to business. I feel like that's something that you and I also have really good conversations about. Mm-hmm. Anytime we're talking about anything, we kind of get lost in feeling so inspired. And I feel like that's what I also love about you know, is that you're so inspired and you want to continue. And I feel like I even forget sometimes that there's a really big age difference between me and Nas. But I forget <laughs> I that forget sometimes. A big <laughs> Literally, <laughs> because she's just, she carries herself obviously with, so she's already a mom and everything, but she carries herself just so put together. Aww, like thank your you. life is just, it's, we're very similar in that sense, but I feel like I have a little bit of an advantage because I have a little bit more years, <laughs> you know, and you're so young. But whenever you tell me about like your business ventures, like there's room for everybody. And if there's anything I can do to help you, like I'm going to do that. You know? Oh, thank you so yeah. much. And I I'm really so excited because I don't even know if they know what you're trying to do. But. You know, I'm trying, but that's <laughs> yeah, the thing. Like, like Yvette's been holding my hand through it for sure. Yeah. And like you also like warned me about the hardships that come with owning a business and all that. But I feel like we're jumping ahead. I would love to start from the very beginning okay. on who is Yvette Garcia. Um, you know, uh, how far is Stockton from here? Um, it's like five hours. Or five something. hours. So is it by the Bay Area? It's like an hour away from the Bay and 40 minutes from Sacramento. So I don't know if you're familiar with the area or not, yeah. but we're like this little town. It's a little, I call it a little big town because everybody knows everyone, mm-hmm. but it's huge. But somehow you will know someone there, associated cousins. And we have a lot of family, but it's, it's about five hours. So the drive, we still go out there every at least like once a month because mm-hmm. all of my family oh, is still nice. out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the drive's not too bad. So what, if you could describe like your childhood or who you were as a kid, like were you always like outgoing and bubbly or were you more like reserved and shy? Or? No, I feel like I was very um, outgoing since a little girl. I'm the youngest of five. Oh my so gosh. So my nice. siblings are a lot older than I am. My, my brother, we're about seven years apart and then mm. myself. So growing up, I definitely had a lot of my siblings just kind of helping me and guiding me and taking care of me. They definitely are a little bit more of father-mother figures rather than siblings. I feel like although my sister and I, one of my sisters that a lot of people see me on the internet with, they think we're just very like sister bond. Um, It started very much like mother daughter because I I had to just basically if I got in trouble I got in trouble with five with four siblings (laughs) and then my mom guys the mic was falling as I was talking (laughs) I don't know if we're gonna see it like slowly (laughs) come down (laughs) guys you know having guests is new for us okay so we're still figuring out the seating the mic all that. Um, But yeah Yasmin I could definitely relate to that because we're seven years apart and then our oldest six years. Like six and a half, actually, like exactly. She's like, well, we're 12 years apart. No, no, no. We're actually exactly six and a half years. Because you're yeah. born in July, I'm born in December. So we're like six and a half years. Yes. And then our oldest brother, I'm 14 years younger than him. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And Yasmin's eight years younger than him? Yeah, eight years. So I kind of, I definitely relate to that. Like Yasmin kind of played like kind of like a second mother role yeah. to me as well. And like, like you said, like if I got in trouble, she would get in trouble. Because my parents would be like, why'd you let her do that? Yeah. Right. I always had to take the... Whatever Nas did, like, I had to take the punishment, too, at the same time. Like, why weren't you watching for her? So, but for me, I always, like, with Nas, I always wanted her to see me as somebody that can guide her. But at the same time, I didn't want to lose being her sister. Like, I wanted her to see me as her sister, someone she can have fun with, someone she can, like, not, like, 
she has a mom. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was more um, like I would like to take care of her. But at the same time, I don't want to lose that sisterly bond. That was very important to me. Was yeah. that how up. it was like with your sister or... Would you guys like get into it? Like, you're not my mom. Like, no, honestly, I, I feel like I just had the most ultimate respect for my siblings. Like, mm -hmm. that, and that's what's crazier to me that I feel like we didn't have very normal sibling conversations. You know how a lot of siblings are like, I don't know if I can cuss or anything, but like, no, you bitch this cuss. and bitch that <laughs> and like, you're this. We were never allowed to like cuss at each other really? or like if my brother ever disrespected me, like we would have, like, it's crazy like to think that our household was so structured, especially because I don't know if you know this, but I, I was raised by a single mom. So for her to be able to do that with five siblings and us to still have that respect, I think it was more like the respect thing that I just had for them. Yeah. And still to this day, I do, even though my sister now were, cause I'm older now. So I feel like I can now tell her like, you're not my mom. Like yeah. leave me alone. As opposed to before it was, she would tell me, okay, let me just cancel your bill because she would take a lot of those responsibilities that my mom wouldn't. Uh -huh. Like she would pay for my bill, for my phone bill. Oh, wow. um, she was the one that was always on top of like, if I was getting in trouble at school, like mm. she would, they would call her. So I feel like I had to have that respect for her in that sense or else I would get in trouble. You yeah. know, it wasn't a normal. But do you sister. feel like you could have um, gone to her with like a crazy story? Like this is what happened at school yesterday or something like so, that. So yes, but she probably would judge me and probably get me in <laughs> trouble. But I also have an, an older sister who's actually even older than me. She's probably like 15 or 14 years older than me. Oh, wow. And I feel like I actually was able to do more of those conversations with her really? than I did with my sister that a lot of people always see me with. Yeah. Really? Because she was also a little bit more like, she would give me advice, but she also just let me be you know she would she wouldn't judge me and I feel like my sister would be like you're so dumb you're so stupid Aww. why'd you do that and it felt a little harder you know now that we're older it's a little different I get it and I understand it yeah. but I just had two different relationships with both of my sisters and it's it's crazy so you were born in America right all your yes. siblings mm -hmm. so did your mom immigrate oh no, not all my siblings just my just myself my older brother and my older sister oh wow yeah and then two of the middle ones were born in Mexico Oh, wait, so she came here, went back and came back? Yeah. Oh, my oh. gosh. That's so interesting. She came over here when she was, like, 14, and then she got married roughly around, like, 19, 20 years old. But she was back and forth because, like, my dad was out here in the United States working, mm. and then they would go back to Mexico, and then my mom would be in Mexico with them, and then they'd come back. So they were doing a lot of transferring around. Like, they lived here, and they were lived in, like, Pasadena. They lived in Van Nuys for a while. Then they moved up to Northern California. Mm -hmm. Then they were in Mexico. Oh, so you guys were in LA first, and then you moved yeah. to Stockton. Oh, interesting. Well, they were. I was oh, yeah. It, but they were. And then um, we went back to uh, Northern California, and then that's what happened. Wow. That's a yeah. lot. Taking it was a lot of, of moving around. Yeah. 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 How's was your mom's like, ability? A lot. Like, now as a mom, don't you look at her so different? Oh, 100%. With five kids, yeah. no help? That's insane. No, you, like you I, don't understand. She, she is older. honestly, like, superhuman. Even still to this day now. I'm like, wow. the fact that she still has energy to even help me with my kids. Yeah. I'm like, I would have tapped out a long time <laughs> ago. <laughs> I would have been like, we're done. But no, she, it, now that I am a mom, I definitely have, like, a different type of respect for her. Um, more because there was so much movement and thinking about it too, I couldn't even imagine being 19 or even 17 years old leaving my house and yeah. coming from Mexico all the way to the United States yeah. to make a living, you know, like that's, I, I would not, honestly, I wouldn't even be able to do that. I don't yeah. even sleep by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always say that too with my, our parents immigrated here with yeah. like three kids. I'm like, I even going on a family vacation yeah. is like exhausting, yeah. let alone moving all these little kids to a different yeah. country. Um, so through your high school years, like, did you start in high school for social media? Or did you work any jobs previously before? Yeah, I, I mean, I was in retail since I was fourteen. Oh my old. gosh! Yeah, so yeah, I started. Where? Um, I worked. So I worked at like the swap meet. Mm -hmm. So I started at fourteen because it was the only place that they didn't require you to legally have any type of form yeah. or documents because you were so young. Um, but I would do like weekend jobs, and then from fourteen, I. Um, once I turned 16, I was able to get, you know, like my, my work permit. I was able to, is that what it would be a work permit yeah. for high school? Mm -hmm. um, I worked at GameStop for like three or four years. So I was like Shut at the mall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was a GameStop crazy. girl. You were not at GameStop. I was. And it's so crazy because everybody that. always gives me that reaction. They're like, how did, I was not like a video games girl. Okay? <laughs> I can't I imagine was, that. That's so funny. No, Wait, no, do you know what actually like, I cannot believe is that you were in theater. Yes. You oh, was in theater. Uh, were you really? Yes. I love theater. Aww. But she was in theater for like six years. Yeah. Like, she's like a true thespian. Yes. I know when you told me that, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, how do you know that? 
a thespian? Yeah, like nobody referenced it that way. Unless oh, yeah. you were like in theater, you know? Mm-hmm. You know. I know. She knows I'm cool. I'm cool with all the crowds. <laughs> like, were you in like any like leads in any, like what was like your favorite like play that you did? Um, well, on when I was, when I first, first started, my favorite one was probably like in the eighth grade. I believe we did Grease. Mm-hmm. And we had, we, we separated the roles where it was, a few different people got to play Sandy, but I was able to be like the good Sandy, the one that was like in the skirt and uh-huh. she's like singing in the cafeteria. I don't know if you've seen Grease, but that one was probably one of my, my like one of my favorites. Once I got to high school, I had a couple of plays, but I definitely was a little bit more intrigued with like the background of it, like the the makeup and the fashion. And like, I don't even know if that's like kind of where it started, but I loved being in the front, but I also got a little bit more into like slam poetry. I don't know if you know what slam poetry really? is. Like we used to go to Barnes and Nobles wow. and do like slam poetry, which That's people crazy. don't even know yeah. that. But yeah, I was such a nerd. Oh my god! Wait, I oh would like I, if I looked at you now, like I would never guess. Yes. I, I know like, I would never guess. Wait, so guess you can either. sing? No, no, no. no. I mean, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't make me sing right now. No, I literally need you to break out into song right now. But no, that's crazy. You know, you you and Yasmin actually remind me a lot of each other because you guys both have lived like thirty lives. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And you know what else? You guys also have the tiniest. Look at her feet. What size are you? I have a size four or five. Four. I'm yeah, a, kids. And boys. Yeah. yeah, that's uh-huh. me. No, literally, what you guys are you both size. Uh, five. Oh, she's. I've never met anybody with smaller feet. Can I see a foot me. comparison? Yeah, but also I'm you're so much six. smaller than me too. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like tall. <laughs> look at my, she says look at my big, I'm an eight and a half. <laughs> That's crazy. No, I'm dead. Um. So GameStop, and then what came? So GameStop was four years. Um. It was like three years. Three years, mm-hmm. and then what came after? Was Did that you go to in college? Stockton? That was oh, in Stockton. Yeah. Okay. All of this was all. I the first time I moved was when we came out here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So then after GameStop. I worked at Bella Pierre. I don't know if you guys know Bella Pierre. It's like a little makeup brand that has like those little powdered um, like eyeshadows and you were able to like do your hair with them and your makeup. It was oh, no. it was like a... Oh, you they're know still those like now. back in the day palettes that you would get at like Claire's? Yeah. It has like everything like lip gloss and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, it was like their own little company. It was like uh, little powders, but you can oh, create like cute. your own stuff. Oh. Um, so I was there for a little bit and then from there I was a waitress at Applebee's. Oh, oh my Applebee's. god, I, we loved Applebee's. I the two, what was it? Two for two, for two. Oh yeah. Two for twenty. Yes. Dude, the then they bumped it to two for twenty-five. I'm like, really? really? <laughs> oh my gosh, the chili is it called the chili lime chicken? Oh yeah, the yes, fiesta. Yes, yes. The fiesta lime chicken. Oh, mm-hmm. so oh, good. With the really good. cilantro rice. Yes. 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 And the little crispies on top, and then the molten cake for dessert. Yeah. We love Applebee's. No, we love like, Applebee's go get us started. Too. Um. So. After Apple, did you go to college or? I did for two years. Um, in Stockton? In Stockton, yeah. Nice. I was studying to do um, sociology, so to be a social worker. Oh, cool. But then after I started doing reports on like children and mm. them being abused and all of that, like I just, I couldn't. I know. I, I couldn't even go through with That's similar with it to how, what I went through because I, I worked at a hospital for, I wanted to go in the medical field, but I wasn't sure like which which way I should go. And just working in a hospital, I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I don't have the heart for it. Yeah. It's it's a lot. I don't think mm-hmm. people overlook that because people no, always 100%. look at, you know, the education portion of it, um, going to school, it's so many years, but you really need to have like a heart for that. It's, yeah. it's very sad. And then yeah. I went into pharmacy and it was just, I didn't realize this. I'm like, oh, it's just pills and stuff yeah. like that. But then when people come, you know, and they're um, ill or say it's just it's, it's a lot it's very heavy yeah. yeah I know I was talking to Elisa about that recently because he had asked me like oh if you could do anything else like what would it be I'm like honestly I know that I would for sure not be able to do anything in the medical field like yeah. I have so much respect for yeah me too for people in the medical field it's it's so me too yeah, yeah. so was it a big deal to like not finish college to your family or were they like you no, know or- you know I feel like um growing up in a Hispanic household, a Mexican household, um, education is honestly not really instilled into us. Like mm-hmm. we're, we grow up very, you are going to work and you're going to work and you're going to work. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the mentality that we always had. I feel like my mom, honestly, she didn't even have the time to even worry about yeah. what I was doing at school or how I was doing or anything like that. Would she have been proud? Of course. I feel like as any parent would have. Um, but she, I think valued hard work a little bit more. Um, and I do, I wish, you know, we would have grown up with a little bit more of education being pushed on us. Cause who knows, maybe I would have finished school or maybe I 
vice versa. But I feel like it's work is like their number one priority for sure. Did you enjoy college? Not really. I honestly, <laughs> not really. I feel like I did it because I really wanted to work with kids. That was like my, mm. when I was, you know, before social media or anything, I really wanted to just work with kids and uh, doing, so I feel like a, so, a social worker was really calling my name, but like I said, after hearing those stories, it just, I, know. Yeah, I couldn't, it's, I couldn't it's do so it. It's so awful. Mm -hmm. And then it's just so hard for me. Like my friend is a doctor. She tells me these stories and then it's like, you just have to move on with the, with your day. Like nothing happened. Yeah. And how, how do you do that? I'm I, like, I, feel like I couldn't. I, yeah. I would I be thinking about it every day. I, I know. Be, I would just be thinking and there's sometimes situations where they don't even know if like the outcome, yeah. I wouldn't be able to live with that. I'd be like, I need to know if this child was okay or I need to know what happened. You know, I was not meant for that life. <laughs> you know, as a mom now, I used to love like horror. I still love horror. Mm -hmm. But now as a mom, I cannot watch anything where there's like child abuse or oh, like no. children getting hurt. Or even like I, I like if mom wants to show me something, I'm like, are kids getting hurt? If they are, I'm not watching it. Right. Um, like there's some movies like Dr. Sleep. I remember watching it before I had kids. Like I couldn't watch that now. Mm -hmm. um, Black Phone was like hard for me to watch because it was like teenage boys. Wow. Like it's just it's. It's so – for me, it got even worse as a mom. So I yeah. can't even imagine doing that as a mother. Um, but I remember – like, I remember I asked you before, and you told me you were a – you worked in a bank. Yes. So that came after I'm like, I love how you're going through all my lives. <laughs> no, literally. No, we need to know every era. Yes. So let's tell us about the bank. I can you tell us which bank? At, yeah, I was at Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. Yeah, Wells Fargo. Our brother worked there yeah. too. Yeah, I was a teller at Wells Fargo for about three months, and then I got promoted to do – to be a banker. So I got promoted rather quickly. Wow. Um, and I, I swore there's a video that I posted on YouTube, my very first video where it was a Q and A and they asked me, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And I was like, I'm going to be like someone really high up in finance <laughs> and I'm going to stay with the company for the next 10 years. Like I really saw myself just staying there. Wow. What, do you, would you say that's your favorite job that you had? Um, I mean, definitely. Yeah. I feel like it was like my first like real, real job that I think I poured a lot of heart into it and I, and I was really good at it and I feel like mm -hmm. I also was in an area where it was very Latino based so mm -hmm. a lot of um you know older men and women they would kind of come and ask me for guidance in finance and I feel like I took a lot of pride in that where I would just mm -hmm. kind of like okay I'm gonna help you I'm gonna do everything that I can to lead you into the right direction because again growing up Hispanic and you know we don't we don't talk about a lot of those things. You know, we just are known to work hard and you save and you pay your bills. You, it's mm. nothing is really taught. So I feel yeah. like when I was there, it was, it taught me a lot. So I was able to kind of give that back a little bit to like the older yeah. you know, Hispanic community. Yeah. You know, you're right. The older, like foreign generation, they are just like save, save, save. Like they mm -hmm. want to just see your savings yeah. just like grow and grow or just like money to sit in your bank account. Right. And they don't, teach you about like investing and like I learned recently that money just sitting in your bank account is doing nothing, nothing. for you yeah. it's not building interest it's not doing any of that so it's mm -hmm. just it's nice that you got to learn all that like yeah. firsthand yeah. um and I just feel like you had such a good balance in your life like you had the creative like yeah. you know being in theater and all that <laughs> and then the um finance so that's just so cool to like you really are just like such a well-rounded person that like, probably you know, really helped also with uh like having your own business and like the finance side of it. Yeah, yeah no, it helped a lot. I'm, I'm still not very, you know, savvy with a lot of that stuff. There's a lot that I'm still learning, but I mm -hmm. do feel like it helped me pretty early on. Guys, quick side note. Mel just came because we ordered Portos, Portos. and Mel thought he had to go pick it up. So he literally drove all the way to Portos as it was delivered here. As we're enjoying our drinks. No, <laughs> it's so crazy. Like we both love Portos. Yeah, I love Portos. That was your pregnancy Portos. craving, wasn't it? It was. Me too. No, I love Portos. Literally. What is your favorite meal? Um, I like the salad, the Caesar salad, mm. or the um, what is it? The turkey and ham croissant. Oh, that yeah. was yeah. so the good. Turkey croissant is yeah. so good. Oh my I god, the torta de milanesa. Have you guys tasted that one? The milanesa. Have we tried that? The before? spicy one. That yes. Mm. That one is honestly so everything good. is so good in there. It so is. Good. Think, <laughs> oh my gosh, we always get it when I come here. Yes. And it's like seed oil free, apparently. Apparently, which I find really hard to believe. I'm like, don't tell me that because I'll start going more. No, <laughs> yeah, no, it is. That was like all when I was really heavy into my uh, diet and and like new lifestyle. That was the only place I would eat because there's not many restaurants without seed oil. Oh, wow. So if my parents were not cooking or I wasn't getting like, you yeah. know, healthy stuff, it would be Porto's. 100%. So, yeah, Portos, we love of what my sis said sponsor. Yeah, I know, and please right? don't break my heart. <laughs> Make know. sure it's seed oil free. As they're pouring canola oil and everything. Oh, God. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, so where did social media play into all of this? How old were you when you were a bank teller? 
Um, when I was a bank teller, I was 20. 20. 20 years old. We're a baby. We're like old men like hitting on you all the time, like in this bank. No, not really. Really? I mean, I feel like no. Or they'd be like little girl. Like they probably I think they didn't take me serious. Yeah. When did you start social media since you were like really into your banking Career. career and you were happy? Okay, so when I first the, like discovered I guess YouTube because that's that was the only platform that I'm guessing mm-hmm. social media was popping at the time um I really enjoyed watching like Nicole Guerrero that era of influencers mm-hmm. and there was a girl who I actually have we have we're pretty qu- close not close friends but we're we know each other pretty well on social media um her name is Elba Mayo I don't know if you guys ever saw her mm-hmm. on YouTube but mm-hmm. her name was Elba Mayo and she was the only Latina on YouTube at the time that I could vividly remember besides like maybe Dulce Candy. So I feel like there wasn't a lot of girl. Yeah, there wasn't like a lot of girls that I guess looked similar to myself or my Viber family upbringings, all of that stuff. So I kind of dove into her and I really loved her content. She doesn't really do social media much anymore, but I've kept up with her. Like I still follow her on Instagram and we have conversations here and there, but she was one that like I kind of stayed loyal throughout her whole journey to where she is today. Um, but in the beginning, I remember I just kind of wanted more to see more of my culture and who I was like on the Internet. I feel like I wasn't seeing that. So I just randomly just picked up the camera. But she was definitely one of the people who inspired me to get on social media. And nobody knew that I was on YouTube for about four years. Wow. Four years? I hid it from everybody. Did you nobody live at home? Knew. I did. Yeah. Really? Nobody knew. Oh my God. Like my parents just thought that I was like inside my room talking to oh, myself no, i don't they know. know you're a thespian like, so they're know, like they're like that girl's just doing monologue there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like no but, um, family friends like nobody like was like no, oh we, i saw your daughter because that's what happened to us a lot in the beginning but mom and dad knew we had what a we restaurant did. Yeah, so it was but, like yeah no i i feel like my, my my sister knew and i was talking to ulises at the time so i remember i told him like oh like i do youtube and he's like okay like i don't think anybody took me serious to be honest like they were just Oh, she's just on. Nobody yeah. really took it serious around that time. And I remember I was at work and when everybody found out that I was doing YouTube, I was low-key kind of embarrassed, like because I, more because it wasn't something that was talked about. Mm. It wasn't something that I was like so proud of. I just thought like, oh my God, these people are going to think I'm so weird. Like I'm just on the internet, like talking to nobody, which <laughs> felt like nobody. You know what I mean? What, what, did that video like go viral? Is that how they found it? No, like, I think someone comments? had mentioned it, that they mm. saw a video of me. I had one viral video go viral and it was me turning my hair from black to blonde. Mm. And wow. also a mascara video where I, it was like the spider lashes and you would clump up your oh mascara. Oh my God. Like now I do like 10 coats what of an mascara. Era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An era. So those two videos were like really popular. Um, and I remember when she found in the, the whole branch found out the whole was oh branch gosh. that I did YouTube like, and it was kind of cool though they were like oh my god you do YouTube oh, and I was just oh like, they were oh, sweet god, okay really good. good I was yeah. thinking like were they being like no, weird they, or they were being nice but then at that point that's when I started being a little bit more open like okay mm. I do YouTube oh my but god. I was still working I was yeah. still working I stayed at the bank five years you know so what made we were, you decide to leave I started doing seminars I started doing the makeup seminars and oh, I started wow. traveling like all over the United States and when I did one seminar and made the type of money that I made that I would never be able to see basically mm-hmm. at Wells Fargo. That's when I was like, okay, maybe I could do something with this. Wow. But I had my sister in the back of my head every day telling me like, you're going to regret it. Don't do it. You need your 401k. Like yeah. this is probably temporary. Like, yeah. Just don't risk it, you know? And it took me a long time to get to the place where I was finally telling myself okay I either take a risk or I'm never gonna know yeah you know and I remember having that conversation and when I quit me telling my boss at the time like oh if it doesn't work out like do I still have a job here you know and he was like of course and it's crazy because he still he follows me still and he'll be like hey Blanca we still have that job opening if you're if you're ready for it you know what I'm like I don't need it yet (laughs) I have like so many questions and I'm like trying not to like jumble around (laughs) was it like a master class the seminar yeah there were classes they were seminars and I would teach them how to do their makeup they would come bare face and we would do makeup together I had a model um, up there and I would just kind of show them how to do a basic look and honestly it did so well for me and I low-key miss it now that I have a brand I'm Mm -hmm. like I would love 
to be able to bring that back and just do it again and even now have my brand to be the sponsor yeah. and just completely You did it for my master class. Yeah, I just yes. recently did my first master class back in what was that like I think like a um, month ago? May? So? Oh no, it was long. It was, it was like six months ago. I know yeah. time goes by. No, so I know. I'm like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but EXO was one of our brand partners. We should do one together. That'd be we so should. fun. Honestly, I feel like it would do so good. It would do so good. Like it would what? just be like so fun. But I do your makeup. Oh my god, please. <laughs> when you know what? We kind of fast forwarded. Like, when did you get into makeup? Was it something you were into as like a little girl, or was it later on in life? Or um, I was into makeup maybe like around high school. I didn't wear okay. makeup until I was maybe like 18. And got really? really, yeah. yeah. I was just very powder, a little bit of concealer, mascara. Yeah. Like the, that was my go-to all the time. And then I started getting really into makeup. And now looking back, I'm like, girl, because it was so, I went from no makeup to crazy big brows and bold eyeshadow. But I mean, it worked because that's how, yeah. that's how I started getting my following after that, that you know? That was what was in at that time. Yeah. yeah. Makeup. Yeah. What, what's like your... When you think back to that time, like, what was your favorite, like, product? Was it, like, Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse? Like, what was your ride or die? Probably NYX. Like, the jumbo pencils were, like, my oh, shit. Yeah. The white yes. one. And you, like, uh -huh. put it all thick on your own. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, they were. And then, like, the, cr time. the cut creases, too, were, like, so yeah. nostalgic. So nostalgic. Mm -hmm. So, Ulysses has been with you from, like, kind of the beginning of your career. Mm -hmm. So, you guys met before you started or after? I, I During, but it wasn't, mm -hmm. like, serious or anything mm -hmm. yet for me. But... Um, we met, we met when he was 16, I was 18 at the time, but we didn't get serious until I turned 20. I was like 20 turning 21. How was it dating a younger man? Yeah. I would good. never guess you guys have an What'd age, like a age difference. Yeah, yeah. We were two years apart. So he's, um, two years younger than me. And then we met at the mall. My sister hooked Aww. us up. Yeah. My sister was rooting for him. That's something she would do. No, literally. Yeah. No, I think you told me once that like your sister a my sister had a crush on him. Yeah, like not even a crush, her. <laughs> but she thought he was so cute. And uh, when she first saw him, which people have probably heard this story a million times, but when she first saw him, she was like, oh my God, he's so cute. <laughs> and I remember her finding out how old he was and he was 16 and my sister's 10 years older than me. So, oh my Yeah, God. so she was like, uh, I have a little sister. <laughs> Why is this literally us? <laughs> literally us. I've, yeah. I've tried to hook her up with men. Mm -hmm. And one time it was really successful, but then he like lived all the way across the world. Yeah. yeah. But yeah here, I'm always so. like, so you got a wife or a girlfriend? she's always right. like that. <laughs> I'll literally she knows. Them. She knows like what I would like. So yeah. she's like, I, I just saw somebody I thought you would literally, like. So I'll let me go. Like, oh. Be like, so do you have a girlfriend? And they'll be like, what? No. She did, that. Have she did that. just like a couple months ago, but Literally, he was I not my type. He was just like a. She thought he was a good guy. I still think he's a good guy. Yeah, maybe well, that's why you're a good guy. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> um, did you and Ulysses? I know because I feel like we kind of started around the similar time. It was like 2012. I'm trying to gauge what time. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. You started roughly like 20. 14 where yeah. I like really took it serious. That's yeah. You yeah. know what? We actually like started pretty much around the same time. Yeah. So. And you Back were a then? baby. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you're like, what, 16? Four, she was 14. I was 14, 14. when I started. In 2014, was I was like 14 turning 15. Your audience have literally just watched you evolve. Literally, they've it's seen insane. like my whole life. Um, but so I think back to that time and it's like couples channels weren't really big. Did you ever have like, did you ever want to join that bandwagon with you, Lisa? like doing couples content, becoming like Yvette and Ulysses or um, I feel like uh, there was a time in my life where I wanted us to kind of dive into that mm -hmm. but he does not like the internet at all mm -hmm. like he has always been very to himself like he just doesn't like to put his business out there mm -hmm. and his family and for a long time a lot of people were like oh do you not have a good relationship with his family because you never post him but it was more respect thing like I'm not going to just put a camera in somebody's face and be like hi like when mm -hmm. they're not comfortable um, but he's always been very shy and he just always had his own thing. And I don't know if also, if it's also like an ego thing for him too, though. He works really hard and I feel like he also never wanted to fall in. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but he never wanted to fall into the, like everything that you have is because of me kind mm -hmm. of, you know, like he's always wanted to build his own person and I his own that. success and his yeah. own stuff without me. So I feel like he always loved that separation that we have had where mm. we do what we love and it's separate, you know, and, mm. and it never caught his attention to this day. Mm. I'll pick up the camera and he's like, yeah. Okay. Was this something <laughs> like, okay. hard for him to get used to? Cause I know a lot of people that are like, they don't want to share stuff about their life. It's really hard being around somebody that wants to share everything. So they're like, Oh, why do you have the camera again? Was it ever that situation? Um, not hard. I think he was always supportive and he just kind of 
allowed me to do my thing because like he knew that I really loved it so he was willing to do that and allow me to kind of like be on the internet and not but I also felt like I had a good boundary where I knew mm-hmm. not to overstep and not to ever make him if he didn't want to be on I wouldn't post him mm-hmm. and if he wanted to be on there then it would mm-hmm. be nice you know but still to this day I feel like he we've gone through a lot because of sharing so much of our lives mm-hmm. that I think if I were him, I would probably hold that a lot like against me. We're like, oh my God, like we're here because this and this and this and social media kind of was a little bit of a negativity at one point. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's always been very supportive. So I'm glad that he's, you know, and I love that we do have that privacy too, where we can still love in private. You know, know, Yasmin and I always talk about that, like especially us women in this industry, like we really need a supportive partner or else it just, it won't, it won't, it won't work out. It won't. Um, so the, I know he owns multiple barber shops. Yeah. Well, he owns one, uh, back home. Okay. And then, um, he's still like cutting hair out here. It's just more like house calls and stuff, mm-hmm. but we're looking to hopefully expand and do something out here. That'd be so cool. But, you know, so he nice. loves it. He's, that's also something that we had in common that I did beauty and he was kind of in the beauty field too. Mm-hmm. So that helped us a lot too, because I couldn't imagine, you know, him working, you know, nine to five and like him doing some type of other work and then me having to come home and not have this chaotic schedule yeah. so I feel like there's so much balance in us both being entrepreneurs and like yeah. having businesses so it really does and it also help helps us. like understand each other yeah you know? it's so different yeah mm-hmm. and he has his brand through the barbershop sharpen yeah. or is that the name dapper. yeah it's sharpened dapper that's the 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 collection is sharpened dapper collection mm-hmm. and then his business is sharpened dapper but he has like men's grooming. So everything that oh, you could so imagine cool. for women, he has for women. Yeah. He has like men grooming, he has hair products, he has a uh, skincare. He dove into like men's skincare. Oh, and um, yeah. do you guys help each other with that? Like, do you give him like some pointers? I do. I try. Um, and I say try because I feel like he's still his very own person. You know, it's mm-hmm. like he likes to make his mistakes and then tell me I was right all along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but like I guess that's how I, it is. That's yeah. how men are, though. Men are. And I'll tell him and I'll briefly tell him like, hey, I think you should do this. And then he's still going to do whatever he wants. You know, he's still going to do whatever he wants. And then at the end of it doesn't work out. I'm like, it's OK, but I feel like he just likes to have that for himself. Yeah. And I don't ever want to overstep and make him feel like I if he would have done it different, it would have been. A yeah. Different yeah, outcome, yeah, you know? yeah. So you guys started dating. In Stockton, how was it to make that decision to move to LA? Like, when was that? Were you guys married for a few years or? We were. We were married already. We had Max and I was pregnant with Camila. So I was about to give birth. And then we were dealing with a lot of stalking back home. Oh. So we were dealing with like harassment, like people harassing us and oh sending us really bad, bad messages. And a situation happened back home that ultimately made me make the decision it wasn't a mutual decision and I'll be honest I kind of told Elisa it's like either you're coming with me or like I'm taking my babies and we're leaving because I felt so unsafe I didn't feel like we were safe there anymore so then I put the house on the market without even saying anything to him I just put the house on sale it was that scary and then he was like oh my god you're serious you know and in a way it was a little selfish on my end because I didn't think about his business I didn't think about the fact that I was pulling him from practically yeah. everything um and once again I'm so happy that he was so supportive and now we're here because one it has ultimately this situation we went through was so negative but it opened so many doors for me that I didn't even realize we're gonna happen yeah. once I moved out here I mean you were just in mama bear mode like when there, yeah. when there's kids involved it's just like yeah and it was so different because they were coming for a lot of a lot of the comments were coming from my kids oh my God. and a lot of the threats and stuff. So that's when I was like, okay, yeah, we're not going to put ourselves in this situation. We don't wow. need to be here. You yeah. know, that's so scary. Yeah. Why did you choose LA? Um, I felt because thing. it was just big. And yeah. I felt like I was going to be like a little fish in a huge pond yeah. and nobody was going to care about me out here. Cause it was mm. something that was so normal. Um, I felt like it was probably the best situation of what I do and basically in what I do, you know, yeah. I'm in social media. So I feel yeah. like it just, felt right mm-hmm. and honestly I'm, I'm so happy that we made that decision yeah. because it opened the doors for were us. you heavy in youtube at that time or yeah i was doing business? a lot of like vlogging mm-hmm. yeah a lot of like lifestyle vlogging and that's when i opened up the most with my son i feel like my audience saw so much of max growing up and mm-hmm. i documented every single milestone like everything that i could have possibly documented i documented with him and then after the situation happened, I completely shut off with Camila and Mateo. Like, I feel like I, har- a lot of people even forget that I have a third child because I really wow. don't even post him anymore. I'm just, 
I and not because of that anymore. I just feel like I'm also wanting to make sure that I kept my identity still for me, like yeah. the makeup yeah. stuff and me as my own person. I didn't want to dive into like the family channels. Same. Mm-hmm. I feel the yeah. same way. Um, just going back to the stalking situation from moving, did you ever get to the bottom of who it was or? Um, I, I feel like we had a feeling who it was, but unfortunately when you're in a town that has so much violence, because Stockton is like number three on the map of like the worst cities to live in, the most miserable cities to live in, the most dangerous cities to live in, in California. Um, I feel like things like that don't get taken very serious and stalking Mm -hmm. too. Also like it's the hardest thing to get justice for. Yeah. Like you have to be dead in order for people to take you serious. Unfortunately. Yeah. Thank goodness you guys are here. And I know you guys like went through a whole remodel. I remember that like the whole remodeling Mm -hmm. process, your, your house. Well, you recently moved and your new house. Oh my God. It's just so beautiful. But your previous one, like all the upgrades that you did, like I love that house. Like you guys did such a a good job. I've I've been to it one time. It was really nice. It's like a compound. It has like, I love how it's like the separate garage and the 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 guest house house for my mom. It's like perfect. And the details, I will have to say, like the details of the home are so beautiful. Like the, um, I remember going to the bathroom. I'm like, wow, everything has its own little place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, it was just so perfect. Yeah, you're so it. good at that. Even yeah. I saw you recently did the playroom for your kids. Yeah. You're so, like, you have such a good eye for Thank you. interior Honestly, design. Yeah. I feel like if I didn't do social media, I probably would dive into real estate, like flipping mm-hmm. homes or even like document, um, like doing de- like decorating, um, any anything like that with like housing would be really yeah. nice. I could see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Mateo, you guys had him how long after marriage? Uh, Ma- Max or Mateo? Oh wait, Max. <laughs> I'm Max. like Max. We just recently had. Uh, yeah, Mateo, yeah. We just had him. Uh, Max was, I think, four years after we got married. Okay, so you guys had say. like a good like time after planned? getting married. Yeah, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys like travel was, a lot? We did. We did a lot of that too. I feel like even when we were dating, uh, we got to experience a lot together so I feel like it was really nice we were ready for sure Mm. we you know we were together we traveled we had fun I went through my drunken life and moments and partying and I got it all out of my system I can't even imagine that with you now like I know it's so different you You should have met met me back then (laughs) it was it was wild for sure I was always not that I'm proud of but I was always out drunk and everything but wow um you don't even drink anymore. I don't. And yeah. it's but it's and it wasn't by choice. Like yeah. I feel like I would have still been a casual drinker like here mm-hmm. and there if we were out somewhere, but it was just cuz of my gallbladder issues. That was Yeah. Like, so, was your wedding in Stockton? Yes. Or, oh, mm-hmm. that's so sweet. Yeah. Um so after you had Max and then I saw like you got pregnant with Camila like immediately Four after months. Oh my After gosh. I gave birth, literally, they're like, are, are they Irish twins? Irish. Are they cons- it, um, they're not considered Irish twins. Yeah, um, but it was four months right after I gave birth to Max, and wow. she was an oopsie, but <laughs> the best oopsie of my life. Oh, I'm honestly so, so happy. Cute. I mean, do you notice the difference that you have twins and uh, compared to like Kayvon being only one child? Mm-hmm. Did you, there's a huge difference. Do you feel like they keep themselves busy, more entertained together? They're more independent for sure. Okay, and I just feel like, and even with them having an older sibling that like went to school first. Like I feel like we just like put the twins in school without even thinking twice. Like with Kayvon was like, when is the right time? Like right. you're worried. Now we're just like, right. They're good. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel you like know? it was the best decision I could, we could have, that could have happened. Yeah. It wasn't even a decision, but the best thing that could have happened was like having them other. so close. Yeah. Because they did everything together. They're yeah. so close. Aww. They hit every milestone together. Aww. They keep so themselves Girls busy. are more advanced, so they're like even yeah. out. Yeah. No, for sure. Because now yeah. that I only have Mateo, I'm like, oh my God, now I know why parents only have one kid. Yeah. It's chaotic with one child. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know what to do with him sometimes. I'm like, just stay here and like yeah. entertain yourself. And he can't. Like, he just wants mom and dad mm-hmm. present at all time. As opposed to Camila and Max, they had each other. Yeah. yeah. So I had a little bit more time to myself to kind of like just let them there, mm-hmm. like leave yeah. them in play. Well, the twins aren't really attached to either Mel or I. Like, we don't always have to be on them. They're actually really independent. Mm -hmm. But they fight. Oh, That's the thing. I feel like when there's not an age gap, like, Max and Camila still had a good, like, year between them. Yeah. But, like, when they're the same age, same, like, intelligence level, like, that, yeah. Yeah. They they just, like, have you ever seen them play? They don't play. They throw yeah. hands. <laughs> oh my god! They're, they're like, fun. Over, like literally, yeah. we're always screaming, like, "Kai, let go of your sister's hair! Yeah. Like, stop biting each other!" Like, well, 
girls, they say that girls mature a little bit faster than boys. Would you say Camila was a little bit more mature than Max growing up? Definitely, but they're also so different. So I feel mm. like that also helps because Max is so calm. I mean, you've mm. met, I don't know if you've met Max or anything, but I think so. Guys, he's, he's, had a he's just so calm. Yvette's children, I always tell Yvette, I'm like, I am dropping off my kids to your house for the weekend to go through Yvette and Ulysses boot camp. Yeah. They, I remember because Yvette came to Kayvon's birthday party by herself and all three kids. Yeah. And I'll never forget, Max and Camila were on the bouncy house. And Yvette goes, guys, we're going home. Get your shoes on. And they come down from that bouncy house, get their shoes on and walk to the car. I was like, really? <laughs> What did you I was like, how did you do that? Literally, I was like, how did you where, do where that? Where did they do that at? We have strict training at KK, home. KK, <laughs> literally, we have to like chase them around. Literally, I have to like beg. I'm yeah, like, KK, KK please. please, they're closing down. Know, Look, literally. the lights are the, off. The bouncy house would have had to collapse. He's gone yeah. a lot better though. He's gone a lot better. But literally, your kids are angels. How? They're so, Thank you. No, they're just I, such just sweet kids. Like, like, Well, I mean, I will say Mateo is definitely the one that's like giving me gray hair. It's okay. the youngest. That's, that's what we're here he for. Is that's your guys' crazy. karma. No, that's your karma. Oh I jinxed. I gave them evil eye. I gave them ojo. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she was like, can you be bad, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in their ear like, <laughs> I know. No, honestly, I, I don't even know how I got blessed with such good kids because I can't even say that it's anything that I'm specifically doing, but um they are really good kids and max is just so calm and he's so he's such a big brother mm. so i feel like when it comes to fighting they'll bicker at each other but max also has a lot of respect for camila and mm. i feel like that's also something that i've kind of tried to teach him like you know you might be upset but like you don't hit her you don't talk to her like that like yeah. you need to came on be, yeah you need to like be sister. there for her yeah. you need to guide her and I, I don't want to also push too much on him either because I don't want him to also get the older sibling, you know, yeah. uh, where he feels like he had so much expectations. Mm -hmm. um, but parenting is hard in general. Like, you know that. I feel like no matter what we do, we can only do the best and raise our kids as best as possible. Mm -hmm. They're still going to be who they be, who they're going to be when they're older. Um, but I know that he just tries to nurture her and like take care of her. And he just has such a sweet little heart. And then so Camila, sweet. she's a little bit more feisty, but... Um, I tell her, you have the upper hand. You're my only girl. Yeah. I'm like, come on. You know, but she has like middle child syndrome. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's like, what about me? Pick me. Choose Aww. me. And I'm like, Camila. I'm like, you're a good girl, you know? And I my love that name, by the way. Camila. Yeah. Or Cami. Yeah. Thank you, Cami. Yeah. Cami. Yeah. I love Cami. Cami. And then Mateo, he's, uh, he's chaotic. He's so fun, though. He's mm -hmm. so His cute. His personality is my favorite. Aww. Don't, don't let them know that I said that. But he's just so fun. <laughs> what are all your kids' signs? Um, Max is a Cancer. Oh, that's, that's why he's yeah. a little sweetie. Camila's a Leo, and then uh, Mateo's an Aries. Oh my gosh! Oh, now you're getting a, a fire sign. Two fire signs. Daughter. Yeah. See, Mooch is a Virgo, so I feel like she's gonna balance me out. She's gonna yeah. be like, "Mom, chill. She's you're doing too you much." She's gonna be like structure. Literally. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's just so crazy. I remember. You know what I just thought of? I feel like this was the first time like we really hung out like after we went out to dinner like we did that double date mm -hmm. um but you had cave on model yes for one of your uh, brands activates. oh yeah uh -huh. i think that's that's when i was introduced to yvette yeah not in person but yeah cave on was yeah. so young he did so good and that's yeah. where so i met cute. yesenia yesenia yeah. uh -huh. yes. another guys good friend I, of ours. i've 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 made so many friends through yvette because literally the people that you keep around you are just so incredible oh. So Yasinia is the owner of House of Wellness. She does like yes. the lymphatic drainage. And she's a sweet. She's heart. the yes. best. Oh like I there's no lymphatic drainage massage that compares to Yasinia. Mm -hmm. Like she's tiny but mighty. Like no, she's. I'm just like, how are your hands that strong? Like literally, she's like popping my stomach and all that. I'm like, okay. No, I walk out of there. Um, I'm like, did I just lose ten pounds? No, yeah. literally. <laughs> no, she's so good. Have you gotten a massage right here? No, but I you want need to. to. Yeah, so it was already when I when I was living in Miami. Yeah. So every time I'm here, I'm like. Trying to, to chase get her a, down, yeah, I know. And she was booked. She's booked One day, busy. one day, yeah. <laughs> and Yesenia also, she made me a tea drinker. Mm -hmm. I used to never drink tea and she like instilled in me and she was like, you think as I'm drinking an iced coffee, she's like, you think cold drinks are good for your healing? Yeah. She's like, literally, it's like freezing your insides. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, she, no, she's all about getting my ass to me. Uh -huh. Yeah. She got me onto Chupa Panza. Chupa Panza. Uh -huh. Chupa Panza. Makes you go to the bathroom, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and oh like, gosh. she'll give it to you with no warning, like after your session. Yeah, and she's then like, you drink wake, this. And then the next morning you better be home. Yeah. You better be oh home. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You better be home. Is it after? But the it makes you feel good massage? though. She yeah, she always gives you tea. It's oh. also she not that, home with tea. And it's also not that type of tea that like makes you 
feel weak or anything like, oh my God, everything's coming out of me. My stomach hurts or cramping. None of that. Like it's just helping you with your bowel movement and your gut. Yeah. Is, I yeah. definitely need to go. Yeah. <laughs> how was postpartum and, you know, going from pregnancies back to back, how was that on your body and mental? It was really, it was really, really hard. And I wish more people honestly talked about the mm-hmm. stuff that we go through as women because I, if I didn't have to go through the pregnancy part, because I love being a mom, like the, the baby after is like the best thing ever. Okay. I would honestly have like six kids. I'm not even (laughs) kidding. I could see myself raising a whole family, but the fact that I have to carry them is the hardest thing. And also I never went full term with any of my babies. Really? All three of them were uh, preterm. So with them being early on, I, every time I had another baby, it was more risky. Mm -hmm. So no, I mean, you know, people don't really give you that information. You kind of have they to just don't. like learn it. Yeah. And going back to back was really hard. I gained so much weight with Camila. I was 195 pounds, which mm-hmm. was the probably the heaviest I, I have been because I'm normally like 125, 130. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a big like 70 pound difference for wow. me. And it was a lot, especially on my little feet. Oh I my know, God. Right? Or your ankles. Like, they're like little. Yes. Yeah. It was so bad. But then after that, I ended up getting a mommy makeover. I remember you shared your mommy makeover. Yeah. Was it? So was it BBL and... Yeah, it was BBL, uh, breast lift, 360 lipo, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's it, 360 lipo. That. Did you collab with the surgeon or... No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No. Um, how... Did you get any backlash for it or... I did. I feel like I still to this day get the, ever since you got her body done, she's a new person. She acts like she's this. And I'm like, oh my God. No, she's always been in here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of backlash for sure. Um, I think it was more they thought that I was trying to fall into a trend of BBLs because I think everybody was getting a BBL at the time. And it most definitely wasn't a trendy thing for me. I My body completely changed and I got a breast lift, which obviously you have kids, mm-hmm. you know how much your body changes after children. I lost a lot of volume and I had really big breasts back mm-hmm. then. So I lost a lot of volume. I got my breast lift and then from there I got lipo. And after the lipo, um, they mentioned, okay, we can do a BBL. And I was like, perfect. Let's put the fat somewhere. Let's not throw it away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? And I do feel like I didn't exa- go exaggerated or anything. A lot of people, when they do yeah. see me, they don't automatically assume yeah. that I got my yeah. body done. I wouldn't know? think either. It looks yeah. just like natural. So, but did I did you breastfeed get. both? I breastfed, I pumped exclusively okay. for each one of them. They were never, mm. not ever, ever able to latch. So me. no, no implants? No implants. Mm. You know, it's so crazy to me that like both of us got backlash for mommy makeovers and I'm yeah. like, That's I don't know. Sad. I feel like when you have babies, I feel like it's very warranted. And it wasn't for fun. Like yeah. I, don't, I think people think <laughs> that we just go for fun. Like, oh, I want to get a new surgery. Like it was nothing like that. It's actually took a lot to go in there and actually do that for myself because yeah. one, we have kids and we would never put ourselves at risk over yeah. our children, you know, mm-hmm. but ultimately too we're young and we want to feel good yeah and there's a lot of things you can't achieve in the gym as much as I could have done a hundred million squats and arm stuff to yeah. br- lift my breast it's not because we have all make, the time yeah. in the world huh? right like it's not gonna, <laughs> some people yeah. don't want to do it y'all we it's don't not, like I don't no, know but I even mean, if we did like I know there's some things that are unrealistic you yeah. can't achieve those things maybe maybe I probably would have gotten a little bit of an yeah but if I would have tried but yeah. as far as like my breast lift I would have never been able to achieve yeah. that at the gym yeah. No. yeah yeah for me like my breast lift like my recent one like changed my life i like love them no, so they look so oh, good thank you so thank good. you no but your body like after mateo and that's the thing when you have like the bbl frame like don't you feel like after mateo just like yeah went I, back and that's what i also tell a lot of my girls when they follow me because they're like how did you get back to your weight i'm like let's remember i got my body done and i don't gain a lot of the fat mm-hmm. in those areas anymore with mateo my tummy was super small like i didn't gain a lot of weight oh, and i do amazing. think it was because obviously i got my whole body lipoed yeah. mm-hmm. you know so it did play so a you big didn't part. do anything after mm-hmm. oh, that's no. awesome. i a lot of people have asked me and i feel like i probably if i had the courage to do it again because i remember having this conversation with you i probably would but I, I can't anymore. I'm yeah. scared. I really am really? scared now. Yeah. I don't even know how I did it the first time. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how when I did it. Y- when time. you're younger, you just kind of. I know. Do. I was telling <laughs> yeah. that to Yasmin, I think, because I got my nose job at like 19, mm-hmm. 19 or 20. And I'm like, I'd be so scared to get a nose job now. Yeah. Like, I love my nose, but like, it's like my face. You think about things a little bit differently. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, if God forbid, I like ended up bad. 
Yeah. It's like smack dab in the center of my face. Like I but can't your even hide it. So good. Though. Thank you. That's oh what I'm saying. I'm glad. I, love I look I'm back like, to my young self and I'm like, good looking out because I, I would have probably been scared. No, I feel like that's like the one surgery yeah. that either you, it's going to be good or it's going to yeah. be bad. Yeah. yeah. And you look phenomenal. Thank yeah. you. So good. Thank I you, guys. So but sweet. when you were uh, younger, you would definitely just kind of throw yourself in. Oh, my yeah. God. Like, like, Nas wouldn't think twice. If she yeah, wanted something, dude, she because you feel like you're yeah. untouchable at that time. Untouchable. Yeah. You like, honestly nothing became could happen. more uh, more cautious after kids. Yeah. That's when I saw a difference in you when you're like. Because now oh. you're living for someone. Yeah. I feel yeah. like when you're I fear just death young. Now. No, I used to not really. Me. Oh, my God. The fact that like I. God forbid something ever happened. I feel like there's just so much pressure mm-hmm. to be alive. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I need to make sure I'm okay for my kids, my family. There's just yeah. so much on my plate, you know? Yeah. yeah. So your gallbladder, was that before or after the BBL? After Camila. After Camila? Which is very common apparently in pregnancy. I don't know if you knew this, but after you mm. give birth, they say that a lot of like 50% of women will lose their gallbladder. Oh my God. Yeah. It's Wait, really high what? up there. Yeah. Now it's like, the where's number, the girl with the list? It's like the number one thing that happens after you give birth. Oh you will, you can lose a gallbladder. Wait, what? Sorry to sound ignorant, but what exactly does the gallbladder do? Wait, but what does it do? <laughs> so your gallbladder basically stores bile. So bile is what digests your food, like what processes your oh, food. Okay. So your liver will release bile and it goes into this little pouch, which is your gallbladder. You can live without it as I'm alive. But the stuff that happens after that I actually wish I would have had more knowledge in, I probably wouldn't have taken my gallbladder out if I knew what I know now based off of my really? gallbladder because my digestive system is just trash now. I can't drink alcohol. I can't have spicy food. I can't have greasy food. I mean, I oh still do. Gosh. Like, I still eat pretty bad, but I will get attacks, like horrible stomach aches because food just digests it doesn't digest oh, wow. like heartburn you get like heartburn heartburn and, and then i have like a really strong pain in the center of my stomach which is nothing compared to the gallbladder attacks because the gallbladder attacks were deadly i felt like i was dying i felt like i was having a heart attack because it was like radiate to the top of my oh, chest and i would feel yeah. like numb and it so was scary horrible horrible um but now i just have to i just have to take care of myself a little bit better now it's kind of nice to have, not nice, but it's like it motivates you to like eat healthier yeah. and like take care of yourself yeah, more. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's where the alcohol stopped because yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. But honestly, it's the best thing too because I feel like so much change. I look back at pictures. Uh-huh. I felt like I just felt more swollen. Mm-hmm. I feel like my face changed a lot in mm-hmm. general. I dropped weight so much faster. Like I was holding on to so much water weight and just a lot of salt basically, like yeah. water retention because oh of the alcohol. So you said that you don't have to take your – gallbladder out right you don't have to no so then why did you why did you you so because i thought that was the only option when we went into surgery they were like you need to get your gallbladder out Uh. because you have gallstones and i didn't know that there's actually certain things that you could do to get rid of those gallstones Mm. and by all means i'm not a doctor so like if you're Mm. like you know uh, i feel like i wish they would have told me the only option they gave me was to remove it Mm. they said you need to get it out and it was like it wasn't I don't necessarily know if it was like a life or death situation but the pain that I was feeling felt like death and I didn't want to go through it I was like get it out of me like it felt like poison to my body at the time it was so bad that's so scary I mean Yasmin always I feel like you have so much fear instilled in you in pregnancy I I do no I always knew pregnancy was not easy because a lot of like People make it seem so easy, like oh, I just had a baby. That was me with Kayvon. But I've always (laughs) seen, I've always seen like like you're you're creating a whole human, yeah. And then you push, you know, we don't think about that. The twins humbled me for sure, and I I always say like I got pregnant so just like blindly, Mm -hmm. like I was the youngest of all my friends. None of my friends, nobody I knew in like real life, I watched like a pregnancy and a baby like unfold. So for me, I just went into pregnancy and having a child just so like you know, just with the vibes. And like, yeah. I didn't even think of like the possibilities of things that could go wrong. Also or like, it was your first. Cause I feel like yeah. that's how I was with Max too. Yeah. Like, You're just happy to be pregnant. It's, yeah. it's cute. My it's stomach. cute. It's so literally, isn't it so much harder to be pregnant when you have a baby to take yes. care of? It's like, you go from being like this spoiled little pregnant princess to how do you feel about like pregnancy tired and newborn tired? Like which one would you, would you pregnancy take Pregnancy tired is way worse. It's horrible. Horrible. 100%. The first trimester. Yes. Like, just being so nauseous and like oh the best God. way to describe it, it's it's not even a feeling you can describe. I felt like a drain battery. Yes. Like no matter what you, you even did, keep your eyes open. no matter how much you sleep, no matter how much you eat or drink or drink more water, whatever, you are just exhausted. Like, oh my yeah. 
Because yeah. a lot of people like to compare that, but I feel like with the newborn tired, I could just, if I'm tired, I could just give the baby to Elisa and yep. I can sleep. Yeah. With pregnancy tired, I can't. There's <laughs> no escaping make myself, it. myself, you know, oh like I'm just There's tired. no escaping it. Would you say Camila was your hardest pregnancy out of the three? N- um, yes. Probably was the hardest even on my body. Mm. Um, but the most like emotionally draining one was probably Mateo because mm. I had to, um, he wasn't growing. So he was like on the third percentile, in the third percentile. Wow. So he was really small. Um, and I don't, honestly don't even know if it had anything to do with the fact that it was a new doctor seeing me and they didn't know my history of having small babies because all my babies were five pound babies. Oh. So I don't know if she just didn't know, but they had me going to the doctor three times a week for NSTs. So I had to do like a bunch of testing. I had to do like monitoring of his heart and making oh sure he was gosh. growing. So I was at the doctor three times a week, my whole pregnancy. And that's already with having two kids on top of it. On top of that and work. work. And, and having to. Oh my God. Did you have exhausting. your business at that time? Yeah. You did? Oh my God. Yeah. It was, and it was a lot. And that's when I told Elise, I was like, I can't. Yeah. I can't do this anymore, babe. Like <laughs> no more babies. Like Aww. as much as I would have loved to honestly have a fourth child, like I really would have loved to had a fourth so I could have even numbers. I, I remember you telling me like I really yeah. want to have a four. I wanted I'm to. like, girl, you crazy? <laughs> yeah, and I I did. Like I said, yeah. if I if they were to tell me you're gonna have the best pregnancy of your life, yeah. oh yeah, and you're everything's gonna be okay, I would have a baby in a heartbeat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Camila, even though she was my hardest, also on my body, she was my easiest labor. Really? Yeah, I had her natural no epidural. Everything. Oh my god! Like wow. she she blessed right me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no pain. I love that. When I tell you, I felt no pain. Wow! I never thought in my life that I would ever be able to experience wow. a birth like that. Were you planning to go no epidural, or it no. just happened like that? I was planning no epidural with Max, and it didn't happen for me. I was in labor for thirty six hours. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, it did not oh. happen. I was ready for a C section, and I was like, I need to fight this. Like, let's push him out, and I was able to. Once they gave me the epidural, I was able to. I'm guessing mm-hmm. relax. And he came out with Camila. I was like, if I get in there and I'm in pain, epidural immediately. Yeah. I went in with that mentality. Yeah. And I didn't feel any pain. I was there. They were t- checking me. They're like, you're six centimeters. You're seven centimeters. You're not feeling wow. anything. I'm like, I don't feel anything. They're like, how it's do you incredible. not feel anything? I, all your contractions are coming. I'm like, I don't feel anything. Yeah. I went to nine and a half. I felt an urge that I had to go to the restroom and she was like, the baby's coming. I pushed and I had the best labor of my life. Wow. Mm-hmm. If That's I could have done, if I could have that labor over and over again, uh, I'd, yeah. I'd have a hundred kids. <laughs> yeah. That's how it was for Kayvon and then the twins. I went through, I went to hell and back. Oh my God. I it saw your so video. Hard. It yeah. was, I cried Aww. with you. So many of us told me no, that. Day. I You're cried really... with you in that video. Aww. Especially because now I know what that feels like. Yeah. I mean, I don't know yeah. what that felt like, but I know what. It feels to be there, and I couldn't even imagine what you were going through. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, twins are definitely very humbling. (laughs) Yes, it's like, I'm for sure not having any kids. She could have twins. I mean, we have the same genetics. Like, you you could conceive them. I know, like, pregnancy is obviously very hard, Mm -hmm. childbirth, but kids are so precious. They They are. are. Like, anytime I see them, I'm like, I will go through hell and back. You know, like, they're just so, so precious. Yeah, Yeah, they are. They're so cute. (laughs) (laughs) um you know before we shift gears I would love to touch on your businesses um was there like one pivotal moment in your YouTube career where you were like okay this is my my main like source of income now like quitting your job was there like a specific moment or something that happened or what did the master class make you quit or was it YouTube no it was the master classes um on YouTube I was consistent but honestly YouTube has never been my main source of income ever Um, really no it's you have an Instagram following with the master class yes I had an Instagram following and I was making the most um income through the classes and that's when I was like okay I think I'm ready and I was actually getting married at the time so I'm like, maybe this will be the perfect opportunity because I'll be able to vlog. I'll have more time. I'm getting married. Um, And then my husband, Willie, says he was like, I think if you want to do it, just do it. He was the push that I for sure needed. My sister was like, think about what you're Mm -hmm. doing. And Elisa was like, do it. You need to do it. Like, it's now or never. Like, follow your dreams. You know, like, we're married now. Like, I got you. Or we're going to get married. I got you. Like, if you need anything. It's incredible. Yeah, I'm here. So I was like, okay, let's just. That's so sweet considering he's not even like crazy and on being yeah no I mean he he was always so supportive I'm telling you like I think he believed in me probably more than I believed in myself Mm -hmm. half of the time like he was always encouraging me to do something with it and that's when I quit yeah and that's that's what led me to that moment but YouTube 
-hmm. YouTube has always been the platform that I feel like it's like my safe space that I like to call it my safe space because I go back, I leave it. I, I'm like in a toxic relationship with my girls because <laughs> yeah. I leave it. I tell them I'm going to change and then I go back to the same yeah. habits. But it's also because it wasn't my main source of income. I guess I didn't prioritize it. Mm -hmm. But I also have to remember that it is my safe space. And that's where I feel ultimately the, where I could be myself and just really post my organic content yeah. with like no filter and I could authentically be myself. Do you think it's um, your favorite social media? Probably. Um, honestly, I feel like it's Instagram. And I know a lot of people don't like Instagram. Mm. They're like, oh, Instagram's dead and I don't like it. But I feel like Instagram's also the easiest for me. To yeah, do. it's quick. Like, it's especially quick. with reels. It's quick. Yeah. It's where I get the most sponsorships from. Yeah. Also YouTube. But I feel like it's definitely like the easiest business wise. But that I love, like fun and be fun. It's probably TikTok. I love TikTok. Yeah, TikTok's fun too. Just for fun. fun. You know, I always preach, I'm um, like, if you're blessed enough to have a YouTube following, because mm -hmm. it's so hard to build nowadays. Right. So if you're like blessed enough to have that YouTube following, like you can't let them go. Like to me, yeah. like that's our like true yes. ride or die mm -hmm. followers that will sit here and watch you for like 40 minutes. Right. You know, people just found me on TikTok. They want to have the mental capacity to sit here and like <laughs> watch me for the most part for 40 minutes. Yeah. You know what? Have you ever gotten recognized just from Snapchat? Because that happened to me for the first time. On Snapchat? Someone like recognized me. It was a guy, of course. <laughs> I have oh a pretty God. big male following on Snapchat <laughs> for some reason. You and I both. I don't from even know how that happened. From posting our toes, dude. We yes, post I'm our like, toes. I'm like, I don't even know how that happened. Um, but literally a guy came up to me in Vegas. He's like, I follow you on Snapchat. Like, and I'm that's like, so crazy. that's the first time in my life, like, I got recognized from Yeah, Snapchat. that just happened to me this past weekend, actually, the fact that you just said that. Yeah. And I was not weirded out, but I was just like, oh, my God. I'm yeah. like, you see my toes. So yeah. see, they know what my toes look like. They know no, what my I toes have that like. feeling, too, because sometimes when I post content, I don't realize that there's so many eyes. Because you see a number, mm -hmm. and then when people come up to you, you're like, oh, my goodness. You're a real like, person. Yeah. You saw it, this yeah. and that, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I actually like it a lot better when they come up to you and like, yeah, actually like connect. You know, oh, For the sure. worst is like when you're out and then someone comes up to you like towards the end. Oh, okay. and they're like, "Oh my god, I watch you!" And then you think back to everything, everything that had just happened, or oh, even like my Uber driver. I had a few times like an Uber driver knew oh, who I, I was, and it's saying. like when we got to the destination, they tell me, and I'm like, "What if I was like, yeah, cussing Mel out on the shit. phone, yeah, no. like all this stuff, telling my girlfriend some tea?" And I'm yeah. like. Literally. I'm like, everything I said was a skit, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was practicing for my new video. <laughs> Have you ever had like a weird encounter with a subscriber or follower that made you uncomfortable? No, I think I, I've I've been pretty, pretty good with like my following and stuff. I think more anything, I just get into my head a little bit of that stuff where I'm like, oh my God, I probably said some out-of-pocket shit or like, mm. oh my God, they know. I feel like the ones that kind of get me sometimes are when I see that little girls follow me, like mm -hmm. really young, young girls. And then I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I need to filter myself because I don't want, I, I take a lot, of, uh, like, how do I explain it? I take a lot of responsibility sometimes and younger viewers watching me that I don't want to necessarily say that I'm a role model because I'm not, but also I don't want them to look at that and think that that should be normalized or if yeah. I'm doing something bad. So whenever I, I can't do, even imagine you doing anything that bad. I know. No, I know it's because you, like, you met me after my kids. <laughs> <laughs> No, I do remember no, your sex literally. toy video though. And oh I was like, my okay. God. <laughs> oh my god. I'm what telling was that? you. She literally did like top like sex toy. Is it still up? Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> yeah. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> it, and it did so good. No, I my loved yeah. it. Number one. We have like Amazon. add to cart. <laughs> yes, number one Amazon product. I kid wow, you not. I was wow. out here blessing these girls. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. <laughs> Um, so with your brands, guys, before we even begin talking about it, your products are incredible. Like you see, like I'm a huge fan of your products and I'm always telling everybody like who will listen about your, Mas she's drama mascara. mascara. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I'm wearing today. Mm -hmm. I always people ask like, what I mascara? was going to comment on your lashes today. They're, they're the bottom mascara. lashes too? Yep. Bottom Naz's lashes. bottom lashes are literally the size of her top <laughs> lashes. <laughs> it's, I swear that mascara, it's it's a tubing mascara, right? Yes. Uh -huh. I love, it stays on because before your mascara, I would just wear waterproof and it'd be so mm -hmm. hard to take off at night. Mm -hmm. But Yvette's mascara, we're going to link all of her products down below. But like it will stay on, hold the curl all day and then it washes off with water mm -hmm. when I need wow. it to come off. It's water Incredible. resistant. So it's like smudge proof yeah. and wow. it will last all day. But then when you're removing it, you don't get the tuggy. Well, I use like a cleanser. Waterproof. I'm not just water because yeah, you said it's no, water resistant. Yeah. But yeah, like I'll mm -hmm. wash off with like my face wash. Right. And it's so easy. Your lip glosses are incredible. 
Um, how I did you stock you up? Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. stock you up on all the products. Yes. I, love, oh, love, no, I was looking. Products. I love the names that you have for them too. That's so yeah. cute. Your brand you is incredible. Yourself? I have a team. I mean, myself yeah. and my team. Yeah, I have so two girls cute. who are with like me. Looking through. But no, the mask, that's crazy you said the mascara because I didn't know. And I was looking at your lashes. Yeah, they're I was like, so yeah. good. And we had that in our gift bag at the masterclass. Yes. We had the mascara. Your lash glue is the also, glue. I saw it's having its little TikTok moment. moment. I know. And it's an incredible lash glue, literally all of your products. And I just love supporting, you know, female entrepreneurs too. So Thank I just you. love I that. It. What so, made you decide on a makeup brand? Mm-hmm. Um, well, because I started with the makeup stuff on the internet, but I also are, I'm very into fashion as well so it was really hard to kind of separate myself from both and seeing I guess which one I loved the most um but then Ulises and I also came out with Act of Faith which kind of gave me a little bit of a mm-hmm. a feel for like the fashion stuff but the that came first stuff, no the, the yes Act of Faith was the our first baby mm-hmm. yes and then um EXO Cosmetics was after but it was only because it took longer to launch yeah so it just took longer in general because mm-hmm. creating a cosmetic line is very, very, very hard um, and time consuming because I can be working on a product for two, three years and you guys wouldn't even know More about it. Clothes, until. you would say? Yeah, clothes is quick. Like quick, oh. as soon as we get a design, we can go into our factory and then they'll cut and sew in like three weeks, yeah. three, oh, four wow. weeks. So it's, wow. it's a really quick turnaround as opposed to cosmetics could take years for us mm. to formulate and really just perfect the product. The mascara, it took us about two and a half years to create that because it was flaky. It was Mm. just um, not doing its job. It was like getting really clumpy. It's a lot of things that go into it, but I've always just had a love for makeup and I saw myself. I saw myself as a business owner and I felt like cosmetic was the one thing that I felt I had the most knowledge in Mm. to be able to create the the products, you know. What was your first product? It was actually lashes. Really? And it took a lot out of me to launch the lashes first, mainly because that wasn't the moment that I was waiting for to have like that big cosmetic moment. Because when I first launched the lashes, everyone was like, oh my God, another lash brand. That's what I got. I got Mm. a lot of the another lash brand, another lash brand. So it was hard for me to explain like, no, like there's more coming, I Mm -hmm. promise. But I also wanted to make sure that because our glues were in there, they only have a certain lifespan and I needed to launch them before they basically dried up and expired. And my palette, which was my next rollout, wasn't going to be available until like five, six months after that. So I had to make the decision to just launch the brand with the lashes Mm -hmm. because my palette ended up having like some situations happen with like the shadows and them falling apart and we just had a whole bunch of mess with that so we had to push that along and then we launched with the lashes what would you say is the hardest thing about being a business owner or anything you would want to warn any people like listening to this who aspire to own their own brand what's the hardest thing the hardest thing oh my god I feel like there's a lot of hard things about owning a business with me personally I think it's just the balancing the time that I haven't been able to fully dedicate my whole time because when you own a business you have to be there 24 7 especially when you're a smaller brand like myself you know we are still growing so much and we're still building a lot of products and I have to be very available and I have to be at every call I have to be in every single process because I am the person still proving manufacturing I'm still the person approving designs like I'm still every single role in my company yeah. I don't have a big team it's just me and two other girls and it's so crazy because yeah, you would think my business like is so whole... yeah we're a really really small team so because of that it, it gets a little bit hard but also just we don't realize how much goes into it too like yeah financing and yeah. payroll and <laughs> warehouse and investing one product alone could be like a hundred thousand dollars if we're talking about like a big stock yeah Yeah. you know all this really did open my eyes actually speaking of that I remember when you know how we talked about Kayvon shot for active faith Mm -hmm. I remember you telling me about the lip glosses then and Kayvon was like not even two yet yes so it was like two years later I'm like wait these are the lip glosses we literally two years ago so it's like really uh, that really opened my eyes too like there's just so much that comes that people just don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And like you said, they're so quick to judge the brand right. without knowing the full story. Mm-hmm. Um, even like looking at these baby indie brands and being like, well, their shade range isn't like good. Right. They don't have 40 shades. But then I learned like you have to have a minimum order quantum right. MOQ. I was just going to tell you that right now. Yeah. Right. You have to order like how many? What's the minimum? Like 5,000? Like, it's like 5,000 per shade, per shade, per component, like per bottle. Yeah. So when you're self-funded it's really hard and I think 
it's harder when you are also compared to maybe a lot of other um, also influencers or people who have cosmetic lines that have like investors who yeah. have the funds yeah. to be able to do that. This is why I haven't even like thrown myself into complexion, you know, because a lot of people are like, are oh, you going to ever do foundation and concealer? I'm like, I do not have the funds or even the time right now to dedicate to a complexion. And when I dive into complexion, just yeah. know that it's going to be because I was ready to dive into complexion. Yeah. I'm not just going to throw a product out there. And I, I think that that's something also that we don't. But I'm also really transparent. I, I tell my girls, the people who support me and purchase our brand, I'm like, this is all my hard-earned influencer money yeah. going into my wow. brand, you know? like So support the sponsorships. Yes. You know, I'm raising my, I'm over here yes. raising wow. my kids and my family. And it's incredible. I'm self-funded, you know? So yeah. everything that I earn through my YouTube videos, my brand deals, everything just goes back into my brand business and then mm -hmm. from there it's like we're yeah and minimum moq is like if i did 12 gloss shades each gloss has a certain amount of units and i have to be able to hit all those units and sell oh all those gosh. units sell all those units yeah. you know oh my gosh, you have to sell so everything. how did you learn like the business like when you first were going to dive into the business did you like have a mentor or was it trial and error it was trial and error for sure oh i don't gosh. even know sometimes i'm like how did i get myself in here like what I'm like what did I do you know because there's been a lot of times I will be completely honest that I'm like I'm ready to just throw the bag I'm like I'm done like oh I can't gosh. it's so overwhelming sometimes to deal with it but then I have a launch and then it's so good mm -hmm. and I get so much support and then I have influencers you know and I yeah. have people like Nas and people who like really just love our stuff that it reminds me like you just have to keep pushing and you're gonna have your moment you're gonna have that one viral moment you're gonna yeah. have the moment where that product just takes you beyond you know what yeah. you're even imagining and I'm patiently waiting for that to happen for my brand but it's also harder because we don't have a lot of product either you know even though we're investing a lot we technically don't have a lot of product like a lot of these brands like say Sephora was to be like we're ready for you I'm not ready mm -hmm. I'm not ready to even be into a Honestly, Sephora I feel like you are because I, I looked at, at the at your website just like to get a a, a, feel? a good feel yeah. yeah and i saw like a lot like you have makeup brushes i yeah. love I your brushes. brushes i'm impressed yeah i've been using your brushes too That's they're so amazing. good thank yeah. you yeah and i love the pink like just your whole mm. branding is and just it matches your walls. really yeah, I know, literally. I know. <laughs> like it fits the vibe um what what's next for exo for active faith um we have a lot of stuff coming out for exo we're definitely trying to expand our makeup products. So like maybe blushes, me teasing blushes and I got blushes. Um, so powders. Good. Yeah. yeah I, I definitely want to also, if I go into skin, I would love to dive into contouring. I think that's mm. going to be like maybe my first mm. brows because brows are something that I for love sure brows. always get a lot of yeah. questions about. So Your brows, brows are so good. Thank you. You guys have wonderful mm. brows. You have amazing too. brows. Um, so brows would definitely be something that we would love to tap into. And then Act of Faith. Act of Faith is probably the one that I'm the most excited about because next month we're going to be launching something great. It's not even a product necessarily. It's something surrounding the brand mm. that I feel like a lot of people are going to be really proud of. And I'm very oh my proud God, of. I'm so excited. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really good. Do you think you enjoy uh, having a business more or the influencer? Oh my God, I, I if you had to choose, yeah, if you had to pick, CEO for the rest of your life or influencer. influencer. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I died. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I wouldn't even be able to answer that because, hear me out. There's two different things that I love about each like being the business owner I love the longevity of it that I could actually build something great and pass it on potentially to my kids and have something to fall on and create something big right but being an influencer comes with like inspiring people and I mm -hmm. feel like that just means so much more to me sometimes that I'm like the fact that there's so many people that will watch and say you inspired me to do this or I was having a horrible day and I just felt better by watching oh, this yeah. or I did this that that alone overcomes a lot of the financial gain or whatever that you might be able to get from a business. Yeah. Because you don't really get that. You can do that with products, of course, like making people fall in love, feeling good about themselves, but truly inspiring people comes from like a platform and you being the person. Yeah. So maybe being an influencer for that <laughs> meaning, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I, I do love owning a business. It's just, it's so different in every way, you know? I do feel like those two things do go hand in hand. Yeah. Like owning your own business and having your own platform. Like so many other brands can't relate to that. Yeah. Where the CEO themselves has, I think you across all your social platforms have like over 3 million followers. Mm -hmm. Like just to have that 
you know, scope yeah. just to promote your own product. Like that is such a underrated blessing that we haven't seen before. No, for sure. Um, How long after social media did you decide to start your business? Was it a long time? So I've had EXO for maybe three years now. Mm -hmm. So it's been pretty recent. So it was okay. definitely a couple of years after mm -hmm. I was on social Where media. Where did the name come from? It's been... Well, like EXO, name? so Yvette XO. So mm -hmm. the E is Yvette and then XO is the um, the last, yeah. the XO in my name. Yeah. But a lot of people think it's XO, like XO Cosmetics, oh. like EX uh -huh. and then O, but oh. it's EXO. Oh, I get it. Like pronounced yeah, yeah, they think it's XO. You know what's so crazy? Like your YouTube name was Yvette XO. Is it still Yvette XO? Mm -hmm. Um, mine was Nazanin XOX. Really? And that was like my YouTube like name <laughs> for so many years. We love the hugs and kisses. We love, huh? yeah, we do <laughs> love the XOX. Also, your campaign for the She's Drama mascara that I'm wearing, mm -hmm. like my jaw dropped. I know. So, you know, you do have this like, which I don't, as someone who knows you in real life, like I don't understand the stigma that surrounds you online. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the hate pages and the gossip pages, you know, speaking about situations that they don't know anything about. But the fact that you brought, she literally brought like one of the people who does like the tea pages who like sits and talks about drama. She literally brought him onto the photo shoot because it's called like She's <laughs> Drama Mascara. No. So the campaign oh was just God. like, you just see comments about Yvette, like Yvette can't keep friends, Yvette's a snake, blah, blah, blah. And then boom, she pops out with her mascara. <laughs> no, she's the drama. Wow. And she got, you I know, got that. like, that, that was, was such a power move. Like when you even brought that up to your team, was it your idea? Was it somebody else's? Or so me bringing in Poncho was mm -hmm. um, recommended recommended by someone else on my team. But the concept of the she's drama was was my yes my mm -hmm. idea. Um, when we rolled out that campaign, it was in January, so it was the first product coming back. So when we first launched EXO Cosmetics, we had a lot of collections. So the collections were, they were okay, you know, they did their thing, but we didn't build our core foundation products, which are like building a good lip gloss, building yeah. a good lip liner, building a good brush. You know, we didn't have a foundation of products. So I told myself for this year, we were going to create those core products. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me start with a mascara. And it's crazy because the mascara was probably the product that we were the least, I guess, not excited, but we were like, okay, it's a mascara, you know, like it's going to, it's going to be a mascara. We weren't yeah. like, oh my God, there's a huge change range. It was just yeah. going to do its thing. And I remember naming the mascara. I had no idea what I wanted to name it. And then I was on a phone call with my sister and I was like, oh my God. I said, what if we call her? She's drama. And then she was like, why? And then I said, well, people say I'm drama mm -hmm. and the mascara is drama. So I feel like it would be a really cool concept of saying like the mascara is drama, not myself. Then from there, I just dove into a whole spy. Like I spiraled into just ideas of how I could do wow. it, what I could, how I could bring the vision. Ultimately, the vision was what needed to be brought to life. Um, so the packaging itself was like a Mean Girl book, and mm -hmm. in the book you opened it. And it was it was a cover, a like you know, like those tabloid yeah. uh, magazines that you would buy where it's like gossip and all that. It was like a tabloid uh, magazine, and then in the inside it was all positive comments about me oh, because I love it was that. referencing like. It's what's on the inside that counts, Aww, not the exterior. So yeah. in the exterior was the negative comments that we usually that I usually get. Um, and we named her She's Drama. So then I pitched it to, you know, my team and I was like, this is what we're doing. Now let's think about the idea was already ready. We knew we were gonna say something with gossip and relating to me and people saying bad stuff mm -hmm. about me. Um, so then we pitched the idea. So now we're like, okay, it's photo shoot time. So now we have to think about how we're going to bring that vision to life. And then one of my teams. Um, he was like, what if we bring Poncho, which is the main gossip guy on all of mm -hmm. basically TikTok and YouTube and probably one of the main persons that created the most negativity and hate. And I'm not blaming him, but he brought it out to life, you yeah. know, um, for myself you know it was that's crazy because i can't even imagine like negative stuff about you like i, I, I you are it, so i just feel like you're so misunderstood online like, and i don't it, i think it's just because i keep myself very to myself that's and, what i'm saying like you're and not either, either it's either a good thing or a bad thing yeah it's either you are to yourself because people don't like you or you're to yourself because you think you're better than people or you're to yourself because i just am very family oriented and i just like yeah. to be with my kids and my yeah. circle my circle is very very small and have I had fallouts with friends of course as anybody has in the past 10 years that you guys have yeah, seen me yeah. I can assure you that there's a lot of people in your life that you have came by and they have left and yeah. honestly there's probably no ill intentions mm -hmm. right it's literally just we outgrow people and that's fine and 
I feel like that's the the backlash that it gets. But I feel like I saw an opportunity to create something great. And when we did the rollout, we rolled it out with a bunch of videos of being ta- me being talked about. So like me crying and me like people talking about me being a bad friend and all this stuff. And then Poncho was in there and this other guy that was doing cheese at the time was in there. And we rolled it out as if like we were going to do like a tell all. Like yeah. I was about to expose everything. Yeah. So everybody in my comments were eating it. Up. Yeah. Were like, oh my God, it's a podcast. She's finally going to say everything. Speak your truth. Speak yes. Your truth. Tell everybody oh like it's their time. Like yeah. it was so, and I was so scared. I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, I don't, I didn't know how people were going to react. They were going to be like, are you fucking kidding me? All this for a mascara. <laughs> so then when we rolled it out, the beginning of the part said, um, I'm not the drama. She's the drama. So it, so yeah. we hired Poncho to do the voiceover. And then he was like, did you guys hear that Miss Eva? Oh so, my God. So he did the intro the way he does all his intros for his cheese, my videos. And then I came out with my mascara and I said, no, she's the drama. And I promoted my wow. mascara. Wow. How was it like reaching out to him? Was he kind of like shocked? Like, um, he didn't think it was going to be me. Um, oh. he thought it was some, somebody else because the person who reached out has had worked with other influencers. Mm-hmm. So there was a variety of influencers that he could choose from. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. So he didn't think it was me. And I think also because after meeting him, he did tell me that, he also didn't kind of understand where all of this would kind of come from. Like he would just report like that was his job. And I don't have any animosity. In the beginning, it was really hard for me to digest it because I was not used to getting so much hate thrown at me at once. And I didn't have control over what people were saying about me. And that's that's the hardest part of the job. That's what made it the hardest because I could delete comments. Yeah. You know, I can pretend that they're not there. But when you're seeing it and they're public and everybody's just engaging, that was the hardest thing for me. Um, and I remember me just kind of telling him, like, I get what you do. And that's I'm not saying that I necessarily agree with it, but I get what you do. And that's that's great. Like, get your bag. Like, I'm there's no ill intention. Um, but my uh, one of the guys that works for me, he reached out to him. And when he found out it was me, he was like, oh, shit, like, what the hell? <laughs> like, that's yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect that. But I'm down. He was super on board. Everything was done, you know, well, like he was taken care of. We had everything on paper and everything was it was very good and then when I met him I was also kind of happy that I hope he got a different perspective of me yeah. you know, because he finally was able to see the person that he was reporting yeah. you know in yeah. real life he took so. a negative and made it a positive yeah that's yeah. so beautiful mm-hmm. I love that and it was good and it's been probably the best launch that we've had I mean we've had mm-hmm. great launches but that one was just also kind of healing for me it was yeah like, it was like very healing for me Aww. it's like people forget that they're talking about a real human being yeah they just kind of see us as like a character or like she has all these followers and money and she's pretty and she's a son of third. Like they don't see like how at the end of the day, like we have human emotions just like the rest of. Yeah. yeah but they just think that's like just going to make it go away. No, I know, love like, when they're like, well, you put yourself out there. Right. So you deserve it. Yeah. You deserve like, the no, verbal abuse. I put abuse. myself out here to inspire people yeah, not to be dragged. Literally, <laughs> literally it's, it really sucks, but I love how you took that. And Thank you. You made a bag out of it, girl. Yeah. Not just like I turned into a positive. She turned into a bag. bag. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's why I just, I'm so inspired by you. Like you're just you, such you an incredible person. I'm so blessed to call you a friend and, you know, we're just so thankful for you to like come on the podcast. Is there anything specifically that you really want your followers to know? Like if there's just like one thing you really want your followers to like learn from you or take from you, what would that be? Um, probably when they see me to just know that the opportunities are endless. I feel like I want them to see that they could achieve anything because nothing was hand it to me. I've had to learn everything, whether it's business or whether it's my social media. Um, I do think we have a power to have social media and change your life. So when they do see me, I don't want them to ever just see what's being shown in the sense of like, oh, she's this or she's that, but more of like you can turn into anything you want to be and really follow your dreams. And I'm so happy that we now have a little bit more respect with like having a job on social media because I feel yeah, like that was also yeah. something that we've had to kind of prove ourselves that it could potentially be something we can do career wise um but yeah anybody can do it and anything is content anything like yeah, you can anything. show your personality show everything and you can that's one anything. thing I have to like register for me like anything can be content anything can be because content. like back in our time everything was more like perfection like the curated, curated, right, curated right, yeah. perf- now it's just like throw anything on there mm-hmm. and, and anything you could just be better. at the grocery store that's yeah. content out for the day real quick that's content I feel like we're also getting a little bit of glimpse too of that when we first started I remember when I was watching like Nicole Guerrero she would just do outfit of the days on the mirror and I feel like we're kind of getting that a little bit back we're, yeah we're just a lot more seeing casual. those yeah. cute little 
yeah. those cute little moments. I actually just remembered, I always bring this up too, because it's still to this day, I think it's like so incredible, um, where you did a meet and greet. I believe it was after Max was born. Camila. Camila. Mm -hmm. And she did a meet and greet. At, which mall was it? In Modesto. It was with Beauty Creation? No, with um, Leonard. He had his own brand. She did a meet and greet. And I swear, like, I need to show you this video. The line was wrapped wow. around the mall. That's and amazing. like, sometimes like, you know, when we have like our heart to hearts about like the industry and just, you know, how we're feeling. I'm like, Yvette, do you realize how poppin' you are? Like, I don't think you realize how like poppin' you are. I remember Seriously. having that conversation with you and you're just like, do you not see it? I'm like, what? and I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's just so easy to like read comments online and just like start to like absorb what right. people say about you. And again, it's, it's hard. Like, I, I don't know if this episode will be out yet because we did film another episode, but um, at the same time, I do feel like to be a social media influencer, to have a platform, you do you do have like a sense of like people pleasing in a way of like, yeah. you want to make people feel good. Right. And the, the base of that is people pleasing. Yeah. So I feel like it is just at our nature to like want, like when we make our content, we never have ill intentions. Like we yeah. want people to watch and like feel inspired from our content to feel good about themselves. And when they leave, you know, these negative not feeling that, you yeah, know, well, what like, happened? Yeah. I feel like I think about that a lot too. And I'm like, well, what did, it, it starts turning into, well, what did I do wrong? Like, exactly. why did you get that perception of me? Like, mm -hmm. did I not show something that might have, or should I said something different? And yeah, it does come back to, and especially if you already have naturally people pleasing tendencies, it's yeah. even harder. Yeah. And I feel like when I first started, it was always positive. So when it did a 360 on me and it was like all negative, I was like, oh my God, what happened? I'm like, oh where did that go wrong, you know? Oh. But now I definitely feel like I'm in such a better space. And I don't know if also kids helped because now those people pleasing tendencies don't happen anymore. Because yeah. now it's like I have somebody who thinks I'm cool as fuck, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. my kids, like they're, I'm ultimately the example for them. And I don't ever want them to feel like they should dive into that negativity. Like mm -hmm. I have more important things to worry about and worry about the people who also really are here to stay that those negative I feel like I've already gone through the worst that I could possibly go through on social media mm -hmm. you know like yeah try me again you know mm -hmm. just kidding don't try me <laughs> <laughs> I remember how eye-opening it was to me just again just seeing you like do so much in your brands where you know you had like all your launches and I remember going to I believe it was Max's birthday so it was like in June it was summertime I remember okay. I brought Baba with me oh yes, that yes, one yes, yeah yes. was that Max's birthday it was Max and Camila's yeah yeah Max and Camila's birthday and I remember like coming and like you were holding Mateo and I looked at you and I'm like he was only how old at that time he was a baby I had just given birth he was maybe like two three months no, he, he was like, like three months. he was like three months and I looked at her and I was like girl you're like freshly postpartum like, I don't know why I didn't even register in my mind, like, that you had a baby. Like, you were yeah. in this, like, little crop top <laughs> and, like, skinny jeans. And I looked at her, I'm like, you're, like, postpartum. Like, yeah. you're not, are you even out of the, what do you guys call it? Quarant quarantena? Are you even out yeah, of the quarantena? I know. Like, literally. And I'm like, <laughs> that's so crazy to me. And you were, like, up and running and, like, doing so many things and working. And I do feel like the more kids you have, the quicker you get back into things just because it's, like, it's second nature at this point. You're like, yeah. all right, like, I'm ready to but get I back. I feel like you can relate to a lot of that, too, though, the fact that we can't take breaks. Yeah, and like I don't we didn't know have maternity you, leaves or anything. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if you feel like that too, though. There's also a lot on my plate in the sense of like, I have a lot of different things that I have to navigate that maybe it's not healthy for me, but I don't feel like I could take breaks. Like I have to Same. be go, go, go. I have to be there. I have to be present. I have to, I have no time to sit down on the couch and rest. And it's like when we do take a break, it's mm -hmm. like it just piles onto the things mm -hmm. that we need to do. Yeah. And then it's like now I'm behind. So the break was kind of not worth it because now I'm swamped yeah. even have more. Have you ever shared what you actually do though? Like everything on your timeline, like everything that you do? I, I feel like I could do a whole separate vlog on I was, that yeah I'm like I feel like people would probably be very intrigued to find out like yeah. what actually goes into yeah because a lot of it with the podcast that this is like a that's whole, already a whole yeah. new thing you guys have to worry about this and then you having, having to come all the way out here yeah. to film yeah. like and, and like, just come back yeah. and we don't have like a back. network <laughs> behind us or anything yeah um but you know you're the one who pushed me to like get extra help I remember you were the one to tell me like you should definitely get an, an assistant, assistant. Mm -hmm. you told me that for years yeah and I was like nah girl I'm fine yeah. And now that I have one, she's behind it's the so camera. Helpful. Hi, yeah. Uh, she's been such a huge help, yeah. literally. Just even like, just to have someone else to, like to remind you of things because we just carry so much mental load and mental burdens. And like, even let's say you're in the middle of work and you'll get a call, call from your kid's school. Yeah. So, and you're like, oh my gosh. And they have to worry about this. And then you have like, well, the podcast and then the work. The and manager, I think people forget the sponsorships, the sponsorships are hosting. a whole business on its own that people don't realize. I feel that it is a little bit challenging because 
with the social media work is a lot of creation. So there's no, like you and I had jobs where it's like you go to your work, you know, you have to do X, Y, Z, you perform right. these well, go home and it's done, you know, right. and then you get a paycheck. Right. But with social media, it's just creative work. So right. you can do everything and then the outcome might not be what you expected or what right. you want. So it's a lot of mental burden, I feel like. Right. It's hard because people want us to be raw and real. And then the mm -hmm. second we share, like, you know, work has kind of been stressful. It's kind of been stressing me out. That's when you get comments like, will I get up at 7 a.m. and go to my nine to five job? And then after, like, it's like, you know, yeah. th there's a lot of comparing. And it's like, it's like we don't get to just share the hardships. Yeah. And that's what makes it a little bit harder because I have the most ultimate respect for everyone who's working. Same. You know, if you're working, there's respect there, you know? So... I just wish we had a little bit of grace when it does come to what we do because it is a lot and it is hard. And honestly, if it was easy, like everybody would do it. And I know it feels like everybody is doing social media and not everybody is really doing social yeah. media, you know? So it's it's definitely different. But as much as we value, you know, everyone's hard work, like just yeah, we're working hard yeah. too, I promise. And I feel that it's for, for social media and influencers, you look at your subscribers or uh, your supporters as your friends and family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like when you're speaking to your friend or your family, you may say, you know, like work has been hard or I am mm -hmm. a little bit stressed or this is, so it's, it's tough when you're trying to speak to them in, in a way where they are friends and family. Yeah. And then it's like a backlash of don't do this. It's almost like yeah. your friend mm -hmm. saying that to you, you know, do you, is it hard for you to balance work life balance? Cause it is for me, it's hard to decipher the lines between work and yeah, I, I try my best to make it look as easy yeah. as possible, but it is. But that's why it's so important to have a good team behind you. And honestly, without even Lisa's, I probably would have already lost my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, because he's so helpful partner. with just mom stuff. And then that's where like the mom guilt starts coming where I'm not as, as present as I probably should feel. Um, but he's a huge help. And, you know, my team, I've built a foundation for EXO that they're there. And then even now I also hired somebody remote to help me um, with like, doing the stuff that I need to do as far as like sponsorships, replying, yeah. posting, all that to just really help us out. And it's mainly because there's so many damn platforms. I'm like, can we just like, I know. can no, we that. just narrow it down? It used to that. just be YouTube and then Instagram came about a few years after and now it's like, even, but you're also on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So that's even, even another Facebook, platform that Instagram, I'm- Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, my business, Act of Faith, oh being a wife. Oh my God kids <sighs> keeping yourself in check <laughs> like, yes. and you look good wanting doing it be, girl yeah i wanted to be you. skinny <laughs> and yeah. like, that's yeah. not forgetting to eat so that's the hard thing too with this job is like we have to still look good yeah. like sometimes you ever just wish you could just do your job like sometimes i'm like i wish i could just sit behind a damn computer and just do my work and be done for the day but it's yeah. like no like i could like you could feel the ugliest you've ever felt and it's like and you have yeah. to be in the right headspace yeah you know yeah. like it doesn't help when they actually point those stuff yeah, out yeah and they'll comment like, like you look swollen like you're the, like bitch shut up <laughs> <laughs> like I yeah. just had a mental breakdown before literally <laughs> Let's get real. I'm like, I didn't sleep all night. My baby was fussy. Right. Like you're glowing. It's, it's oh actually my, my sweat and tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Literally. Uh, do you feel like having the warehouse? Because you have like an office, which is so cute, by the way. Yeah. Do you feel like it helps with like separating the two? Definitely. And also me moving was a great thing too, because when I was closer, I found myself going to work more. Mm -hmm. Now I have to plan my day to where like oh. I'm only out here you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays and nice. I'm working and then I have to take everything. Po I pick up all of my packages from the post office. Everything that has to work around it will be Tuesdays and Thursdays. Wednesday, uh, Monday, Wednesdays, Friday, I can create content. I'll be at home. I'll post. I'll be with my kids. Like mm -hmm. I get to pick them up from school, yeah. all that like fun parenting stuff. And then the yeah. weekends, you know, I'll just vlog and create content. But I feel like now I'm a little bit more structured. I definitely feel like I have to plan my days out, but it's always a learning. There's never enough time. There's mm -hmm. never enough time as much as never I, and especially enough. with me that I think I could do 20 things in one hour. I'll be like, yeah, I'll be there. It's like five o'clock. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Literally we're the same. And you know, one thing I love about Yvette and I, we'll be talking and then we'll be like, we should invest in that. No, like, literally, literally every second we'll be like, we should invest. We'll be like, oh my God, we love Portos. Should we invest oh, in yeah. Portos? Do you want to open something? Should we open <laughs> Portos? And like, like, should we do it? I'm, I'm still waiting. Like, okay. I'm still waiting for uh, we literally, Nas and I to do something together. No, let me tell you. My favorite is that we'll be sitting here like talking about how tired we are, how stressed yeah. we are, how how stretched out we are. And then we'll be like, should we invest in a restaurant? Yeah. Should we open a Pilates studio? No, literally. I was like, you've been Pilates, you've been loving it? Let's open a studio. Let's open a studio. <laughs> literally. It's because it comes we with bring it being on ourselves. so inspired. Yeah. And we 
want to it never stops i feel like my brain never, never stops. stops never i'm stops. always looking for the next big thing next venture what i'm going to do next and then i'm complaining about being tired same <laughs> same i get you, you i get find you that when you uh do take a break and like you're like okay today is just gonna be a relaxing day you can't relax no and that? i feel so guilty i feel lazy and also i don't even know if that comes from also childhood trauma because same. my mom mm. it, oh my god like if she sees you on the couch you're lazy get your ass up and do something something needs to be done yeah so i feel like that's also instilled in me because even lisa he's like relax chill just let me see your phone let me and i'm like oh my god i'm like panicking because i know that when i get that phone back <laughs> i'm i'm gonna just have to catch up yeah. no you know yeah. i'm playing catch up at this yeah. point it's hard it's hard it's so hard to just turn it off yeah. it's hard when it's like your brain is just wired that way you know and i feel the same way you know like you mentioned like you have this mom guilt from you know, working so much. Like we grew up with parents who worked a lot. Like we had our family restaurant. And I always say, I never once felt like my parents didn't love me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like even if they were at the restaurant stuff, like I, I Same thing. you know, I never ever felt a distance in love from my parents yeah. or like neglect from my parents. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you just tell yourself whenever you're feeling like that with not spending time with your babies? Yeah. I mean, also my kids are really young. So I'm like, I'd rather like build my, now. just like how you are, like your kids are young now. I'm like, I'd rather build my foundation now. So like when we, when they are like six, seven, eight years old, like we're traveling the world together. We're like, yeah. we're living off the fruits of our labor of like yeah. the foundation yeah. that I put. Cause I also had kids like really young, you know, right. I had my first at 21. So I didn't really have an opportunity to build beforehand. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't feel like I'm too it's nice that we get to work from home for the most part. So that and helps we technically a lot. do see them a lot, probably yeah. more than we even think. And you and you tell me too, like Max will sit on his iPad like while you're doing yeah. your makeup and stuff. So like I feel like Kayvon's getting to that age where he can do that now. Yeah. Like kind of be in my vicinity, not distract me from work, but kind of just like vibe with me. And that would be us at our parents' restaurant too. Like yeah. we'd be there, not necessarily like hanging out with our parents, but we'd be there. Right. So but it's nice to also hear it too from another content creator mom you know to see kind of what makes you feel better when you are in those situations because I think those are the hardest for me where yeah. I'm not balancing and I'm really oh my god like is am I not spending time and it doesn't help because I don't know if Kayvon's at this stage yet but it doesn't help that my kids call me out they're like you're going to work again oh, why are you at work why are you leaving? they are older so they yeah, might start like yesterday we had a photo shoot and I had all three of my kids at the photo shoot and it felt good because they felt like they were with me I felt like I was with them yeah. I love and that. I was able to kind of like balance that but they do call me out. Like, they'll be like, where are you going? You're going to work again? I want to go to work with you. I want to be with you, you know? So, but back to your point, it does help because even my mom, she was working 15, 16 hour days and not once did I ever feel like my mom was never with me. Yeah. Like, I have the most respect for her. I'm like, you were working so hard to provide for us and I never felt neglected. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, there was so much love in my house. You know, yeah. there was so much love. Mm -hmm. So as long as we could do that for our kids, we'll be fine. We'll be good. Yeah. We got I mean, this. just the <laughs> fact that your kids get to grow up like seeing like a photo shoot and stuff like that's so th those are like core memories for your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember I started having like really good memories at like four or five years old. Mm -hmm. So like I would like that photo shoot, I would remember if I was Camila like the rest of my life. Yeah. Like that, that's just so cool. Do you yeah. ever wonder what's going to be the kids of social media though like how they're gonna grow up and be as adults. I know you ever wonder that I always wonder like what that life is gonna be that's like a whole like you know growing up with like an influencer mom I'm yeah. sure yeah. <laughs> like therapy like <laughs> yeah. for that. you think so how, I wonder how our mental is gonna be affected too yeah, like I don't know sharing so much I feel like it's also kind of cool too though because Max he's starting to kind of get into YouTube and he's like same with game on you do YouTube mom he just Aww. discovered Yvette Excel so it's the cutest thing ever he's no, like always watching all our it. videos do you think they will go into that like social media? I don't know. I would definitely not be the parent that's going to th throw it at them, though. Same, yeah. same. Like, I actually feel like maybe if I even homeschool my kids, they won't even have to want a phone until they're like 15, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, I, 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 I <laughs> yeah. agree. You know, I think both of us do a really good job of like not exploiting our children. Like we have yeah. our own, we could literally decide to not show our kids on yeah. our social media at all. And I think our People careers still would watch. still, like we would still have our audience. And that's yeah. one thing I I really value in my audience that they yeah. still love me for me. And I always try to balance it. I don't want to be too mommy. Cause again, I right. am only 25 and I know a lot of girls like grew up watching me and they're on my age and they don't even have a thought about kids or right. marriage or anything. So I still want to appeal to them. I don't want to just completely alienate my followers who like don't care for that I think you you're very do a really great yeah job. it's very versatile mm -hmm. you know it's very versatile in that sense because you are targeting so many different people and that's yeah. conversations we've had all the time where we're like we are targeting everybody yeah i'm like that's we can, amazing though. we can we can get a that's sponsorship a with clorox yeah and i know <laughs> i know right like dyson I like know. i work with like dyson target like the but i feel like that's the mommy. new age like that's mm -hmm. how we are now mm -hmm. you know so yeah. 
I don't feel like we're at a time where we have to choose either mommy or just beauty yeah, or just yeah. this word multi. And yes. I just see your platform and I'm living through you, girl. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Like I see you sometimes. I'm like, oh. So Yasmin says the same to be young in Miami and just go to the I love that. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna show. I love it. Yeah, I literally. literally. No, okay. So it's always like she's living her hot girl life. No, literally. I love it. I really do. Um, you gotta come visit. I do. do. I've been asking them. Like, come. (laughs) We're gonna have to drag her out. Anybody, come. No, No. she'll she'll love it. No, I'm ready. You don't even know. I'll be there. I will be there. Mom's right out. I need for a good time. Anytime. Yeah, they always no, say that really there's nothing better than moms who are been locked in their house going right. out. <laughs> oh God, when Nas when Nas comes and visits me, I'm like, I need to mentally prepare. Yeah, yeah. I ready. mentally prepare because I come with like my two other like girlfriends yeah. who are like yeah. no kids, young, like they just want to yeah. like have a good time, and I'm like, y'all, yeah. so you better keep up. No, so for her, it's like okay, so from two to four, we're gonna be on a boat. From four to two, we're gonna go to brunch, and then we're gonna I <laughs> like love literally it. like there's this bus. just bus. another <laughs> club, another Plane. club, and I'm like, all right, <laughs> okay. Place. And then we're gonna take a <laughs> we're gonna oh take a private jet God. to um I don't even know <laughs> right literally like really? she comes up with so many plans. And Yasmin's like a one one activity. I like per to day. do yeah, I like to do like one activity. Is it because she has time? That's why. Yeah, and, and I'm <laughs> used to it. I, that's yeah. what I'm used to it. And I think even I had someone tell me, um, they're like, when I need something done, I tell my friends who have kids. Yeah. They're more on it than my friends who don't have kids. I agree. When I have more things to do, I get more done than if I have two things to do. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Because if you only she gets have decisions, because you know you no, have I time, do. That's I why. do. I'm like, should I do my two things now or in <laughs> five hours? Should I just rest? I love that for you. <laughs> no, but it's but when I do have a lot of things to do, like I, I do schedule it out. So yeah. I yeah. can see like if you have kids and other things to worry about. Yeah. Sure. But yeah. they're so worth it. No, no they it. are. And I can't wait for that. I'm telling you. you, all of the mm-hmm. pregnancy stuff you guys told me, like it scares me. Yes, but I'm going to do it. So. Yes. <laughs> they're, no, they're, so like, they're so worth it. I always say that's why babies and toddlers are so cute because they have to be that cute. Yeah. For us True. to not want to throw ourselves literally. off. About, like literally. True. But you like they'll drive you crazy different. and be like, oh, but you're so cute. And no, you grow like, different patients for your own kids. Too. Different patients. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Like um, when I'm over at their house and we're eating dinner, like the babies, their food is literally the, everywhere. The like on the more ceiling, the everywhere. And then you look at their face and you're like, it's okay. Yeah, yeah literally. It's okay. But like if it was cute. anybody else, like, what are you doing? And mm. Yasmin, like, you know, she has her own apartment. She's always like, I can't sleep in a dirty house. I like, can't. And I look at her oh and gosh, I'm know, like, Yasmin, you don't remember how I used to be like clean freak. I like, I, But your home is still clean. But you like compared to how it's still clean. Okay. The, the most, it's just like toys everywhere. But obviously kids are playing. Yeah. And don't then, don't you, you kind it. of like, like you've surrendered to the mess? No, I'm still behind them. I'm like, <laughs> no, your home literally no, your home was perfect. When no, I went in there, I'm like, is this a model? Literally, home? like even your baseboards. I'm like, where are the chips? No, Where's but I the- need therapy for that. I'm so serious. It's not really? healthy because I'm like behind them every minute of the day that I'm just like, oh my god, like yeah. I'm just like, oh my god, let's pick up, let's do this. But yeah. then my also my kids are also picking up on those habits too, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So that's why I need to kind of get myself together because it's my thing. kids. They're like, okay, we'll pick up, we'll do this. We'll, like, they're I think so it's a tidy. good thing. I think cleanliness is a good, a good trait thing. to have. Yeah. I just don't want to make them remember me as like my mom was always clean. No, you know, they like that's the one my mom was the mom for. That would take me to my to the photo shoot <laughs> yeah. for her makeup yeah. brand. That's what they're gonna remember. Um, and then, but I remember me and you both talking about this that we need. It's hard when you work from home, but like you need a clear space to work. Yes. Oh yeah. So it yes. adds more time to like getting work done because like wait, I need to schedule time to clean and then get ready to work and then film. Guys, I don't <laughs> know how you guys do it because for me, even if I have work to do and there's dishes in the sink, I'm like I you still I, even if there's a bowl, like one bowl. That's why like, we have, have our husbands. Who yeah. Help. Like I need and it's nice we do have someone else because she's like alone, so it's like you don't have someone yeah. to like help you with the cleaning. Yeah. But, Mel will like, you know, clean no, while I'm yeah. like working, you know. No, even being here, um, like I was working all day yesterday and then just like mama and baba and being like, do you want this for dinner to eat? I'm like, yeah, I don't have to worry about yeah. food. I don't have to worry about what to eat. Like, it's just there, you know, yeah. like it's, it's so comforting to be yeah. honest. Yeah. When yeah, you're doing pretty it pretty supportive again. partners. That's a great help. Yes. Yeah. You know, what's crazy. We've been talking for two hours. I know. Does it feel like two hours? It doesn't. Oh, and I feel so like there's fast. so much to talk about. I know. I feel like there's so, so, so two more hours. I know, guys. Hard to have you back on. Yes. Yeah. No, that'd be so yeah. much fun. But yeah, again, thanks so Love much it. for taking the time out yes, of your you crazy so busy much. schedule to come hang out Maybe with us. Maybe our next podcast will be in Miami. Oh my God. From yes. a yacht. Yeah. Shaking our asses on a yacht. We're going to have mics on the yacht. What's up, guys? Mics. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We're going I, on a so private down. plane after this with Nazi's plans. <laughs> no, literally. And then a club and then dinner and then brunch. No sleep. No, no sleep. sleep. No sleep. Straight from club to brunch. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But thank okay. you guys so much for having me. Thank you. Thanks we'll have here. all of Yvette's social handles linked down below. Yes. Also, EXO Cosmetics. You guys have to buy the mascara. Literally, you guys. No, literally. I'm going to get the mascara this after this. I was going to ask you. That's the funny part. You're not wearing lashes? No, dude. This Bro. is She's Drama. Like, that's insane. She's drama. She's drama. <laughs> um, I believe I'm wearing your lip liner too in OG. Oh, in OG. No, not the lip liner. The lip gloss. The lip gloss. The no, lip gloss. Lip stick. OG is a lip kit. The lip. The, the lip kit. I just the got lip your lip kit. Oh yeah, OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, guys, the Nicki Minaj concert. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, that was, was your so first fun. like brand event, it was. wasn't it? Did you guys have a good time? Oh my so gosh, good. I was. I felt so proud in that moment. Oh, I'm yeah, like, look, thank like you. everybody looks so bomb. The whole like yes. setup for the concert. Where would your like dream EXO? Let's say you did a brand trip. Where would your destination be? Brand trip. Mm-hmm. Like if you were to host a brand trip for EXO Cosmetics, maybe like Turks and Caicos. Ooh, Ooh like I that. would have to do beach. I'm yes. a beach girly. Love that. I, I feel like, like that's our summer vibe. Yeah. Because I'm in July too. Your birthday's in July. Yeah, July what? 21st. Oh my God. You're not a Leo though, right? No, I'm, I'm a cuss. Year. Wait, you guys oh. were born the same year. Yeah. 92. Oh, no. Oh, 91. Oh, uh, yeah. I was like, wait, are you guys like the same birthday? Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Well, I, checked, I checked your birthday because I wanted to know like what's yeah, July 31st, yeah. Leo. Leo. Uh, I've okay. heard July Leos are very different than August Leos. Oh, 100%. Even yes. if I'm the last day of we are. Yeah. No, I remember texting Yvette because I saw this meme that was like, you know they're a Leo when they have a lion tattoo. And the fact that you, you have actually a lion tattoo? have oh a lion Oh my gosh, wow. I was like, That's the gonna... ultimate lion tattoo. I know tattoo. another Leo with a lion tattoo. Yes. I was like, We're wow. proud, girls. Yes. You like, do have a good symbol. Mine is like the half man, half horse with the arrow. A sa- oh, yeah, yeah. What it is? Yeah, but it, it but uh-huh. it looks like a little person, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's like it's like the guy from Narnia. That's it's like the human cute. with it's the horse yeah. and the little yeah, little cute thing. Yeah. I know. And he asked him to crab. I'm a crab. Oh, crab cute. Crab. <laughs> <I'm> a little <laughs> show. Yeah. Okay, now yeah. we're just yapping, y'all. I thank know. you so much for watching. Again, follow Yvette down below all of her links. And thank you for uh, being here. Yes, thank, thank you guys. You. I this appreciate it. Hopefully, we can come back for another. Yes. 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 For sure. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.